Yes, welcome to City University Oval quarterfinal time in the Kingsborough T20 competition at City University, the home side about to take on Fairfield Liverpool. Beautiful day here, 25 degrees, a little bit of wind around, but great conditions for cricket. We have found out that Fairfield Liverpool will be batting first in this match. Good afternoon, Georgia Lomas for Terra. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon, listeners. We are here at Ukraine at City University Oval number one. Sandy, honestly, it looks more like a beach. I'm not gonna lie, but look, hey. I went to the beach yesterday. Oh, good job. Yeah, got a tan. <laughs> I can tell, clearly. But uh, this is generally what happens in between two seasons. The AFL season finishes, the pre-season starts, and unfortunately, the grass just isn't given enough time to rejuvenate and regrow. But it'll get there, it'll be luscious in no time at all, I'm sure. But fantastic weather for cricket. Absolutely. Let's have a look at the form guide coming into this one. Sydney University didn't play last week, they topped Paul B and uh, two weeks ago they actually had a good win over Hawkesbury with Sydney University 7 for 142, Hawkesbury 9 for 109. Stars in the match were Daniel Mortimer for 33 and Kieran Pace 4 overs, 3 for 5. As far as Fairfield Liverpool, they actually had to win an elimination final last week. Uh, they got 6 for 158, Lansdowne 6 for 149, they beat them there. Luke, Oronofsky, the captain, got 87 in that match, and Josh Baraba, 4 overs, 4 for 24. The players have hit the field, let's have a look at how the teams line up for this match. Sydney University, Tim Cummins will be their wicketkeeper and captain, Jack Edinburgh, Jordan Gauchi, Hugo Akita, Devlin Malone, the medium pacer, Ryan McIlduff, Damian Mortimer, William Salesman, Karen Tate, and Juna Verma. Top man will be Andrew Hazard. Fairfield Liverpool, well, this is their lineup. Max Farmer will be their wicketkeeper. Josh Barama, Nick Carruthers, uh, Cameron Frendo, Liam Hatcher, Jake Langdon, Yuba Nishke, Luke Oronuski, the skipper, Yuvrit Sharma, Jaden Simmons, and Mansur Singh. Umpires today will be Daniel Moran and B. Jadrowitz. Players are out on the field now. It will be Fairfield Liverpool batting first with their blue shirt with the yellow trousers. Sydney University with the predominantly blue shirt with the yellow numbers. It's going to be an interesting one here. Uh, Georgia Lomas for Terra and a quick tip from you. I feel like it would be unfair considering I played for Sydney University women <laughs> to, to, to give a tip. Um, but look, I, I think it's going to be close. I'll say that. I reckon it's going to be close with your team. Gets there, just gets there. Absolutely. So, Will Salzman will be opening up the bowling for Sydney University, taking strike Nick Carruthers and Jaden Simmons at the non striker's end. And Nick Carruthers, a left handed batter. Ice Pro building here at Sydney University Oval. Great uh, little drive around there, Georgia had before we get all the uh, <laughs> classrooms and buildings of this university. What a great setup. Okay, it came a bit of a walkthrough of where I went and had my classes in the yeah. same like two buildings for four years. First time I've been to university, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Awesome. So, first ball here, and it's going to be Wolf Salesman, right arm bowler, charges in now, and nice little shot off the leg, straight to the fielder there at mid wicket, who fires it into the wicket keeper. One ball gone, no one. Bad start. I mean, we, we like them, but we'll start the game. Absolutely. So, Sydney University would, would be favourites. They qualified, lead, winning all four games in their pool, will be in this competition. This is four pools, five teams in each pool. He runs in again now and a swing and a miss outside the off stump through to the keeper for Tim Cummins, the brother of Pat Cummins. So a famous uh, cricket name there. What about that India Pakistan game yesterday? 110,000 India defending Pakistanis. I know you were out and about, George, and I was looking up on the phone. I, I saw glimpses. I yeah. just didn't watch it. Intently. Yeah. 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 It was there, That's and I acknowledged it. Yeah. <laughs> so here goes the salesman again. Nick Carruthers on strike. 
Clips this one off the leg. This could roll away for four. He's got it pretty fine and it will. So first one to the day here for Fairfield Liverpool. No wickets for four in the first over. Bad Absolutely. It's teaching. Yeah, especially in these first four overs with yep. the power play, isn't it? It's changed yeah. that six overs than it used to be. Yeah. And, um, here we go. So a little bit the excited, that one. Selvin runs it again, the right armour. Oh, and that's an absolute beauty. It's jagged away on a beautiful line just outside the off stump. Through to the keeper and Cummins. And uh, Super University here. Firing the ball around the field as they do and eventually get back to the bowler. Of course, John Kilford, the scorer for Sydney University, was the 19th year of going scoring. A shout out to him, he won scorer of the year two years ago. John Kilford, a nice gentleman, of course, giving me the numbers of the players earlier on. As here goes Salesman again. Oh, and that's a short one, but he didn't put it away. He will get a single. Just behind square leg. In fact, they're going to take the fielder on and go for two. A couple of and it's a no ball as well. So the umpire here signals free hit to him. We could have some fireworks. Dutch recover up in the commentary box. Look out, maybe. Does it mean I have to actually try and catch the ball? <laughs> if it comes out, you're not going to catch it, let's be honest. I know that. Yeah. But believe it or not, the average run scored from a no ball. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So here goes Salesman again. And Carruthers has absolutely slammed this one. Yeah. It's just been secure on the first there. A big square there. They pick up four. It's a pretty good start here for Fairfield Liverpool. As they move through with no wicket for 11 in the first over. <laughs> yeah, true. Right. By three. Yeah, by three. By three. You'd have to come to later. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so they've been making some mistakes. Yeah. So Carruthers has faced every hill so far in this over. And this one he just leaves it outside the off stump like the old test match lead. So one over gone here in this T20 quarter final Fairfield Liverpool. No wicket for 11. Quite a bit, you're probably hearing the effect of mine as well. We tried our best to play this. I tried. I tried. It was a good effort. There's a lot of cable ties. It is a pretty breezy day here. Let's uh, start here for Fusil Liverpool. Yeah. Sydney University renowned for bowling teams up with quite low scores over the years in this competition, the last few years. This will be, uh, Juna Verma bowl now, right armour, pace fan. Juna Verma, quite a, a lean bowler, like Marjorie Jackson from South Africa, that kind of a build. And this is a beautiful ball right on the spot, but nice running as well as they push it down the ground for single Jaden Simmons. Not faces his first, and no wicket for bowl. How is good spatial awareness as well? Knowing and depth perception. Because when you are facing, it can be incredibly hard to predict, like, you know, am I going to get that run? That's why you love hard. That was fantastic spatial awareness, fantastic grappling up as well from a uh, non striker. Absolutely. The communication is important, of course, especially in these T20s. Group brothers on strike. A little bit wide here, and he just taps it out into the off side. Just in front of the point for an easy single. Fair feel a little ball, knowing if they just have a strong start here. It's going to help them. Of course, they scored 6 for 158 against Dankstown last week and defended that, winning that match by 9 runs. Dankstown getting 6 for 149. Again, it's going to be. Juna Verma running in now. Johnny on the spot again, but again good running. 
Oh, not too far away as he goes, fires it into the striker's hand. They will pick up the single again, though. No wicket for 14 in the second. Very low, too, when it came in. It came in hit the pitch, but it was almost slipped through. It was ridiculous. So maybe uh, we might see it towards the end of the pitch. Yep, that's right. Strike the pace. Here goes Unibama again. Oh, and that's an edge. It nearly went onto the stumps there. It hits the pad. Could have been inside edge. Uh, it's probably a bit loose there. Maybe it's got away. It's just going to be there. Conditions here 25 degrees, 230 start. Of course, local time here in Sydney. Here goes Verma again. And he's edged this one bounce through to the keeper and Cummins. And uh, just right outside the off stump there. Edge shot. But uh, no run. So one ball left here in the second over. No wicket at 14. We'll give you some updates later on at the other three quarterfinals happening today. As the game, as the day goes on. Here goes. Oh, and this is an absolute ripper of a shot onto the embankment here at University Oval for set. Over deep square leg, that is a cracking shot. Two overs gone, few for Liverpool, no wicket for Still a shot. I kind of I lost it in the trees. Right, right up, and I saw him out, I was like, yeah, we, we, we good. And <laughs> only two people are showing up, so it's good to know when you want the ball, and someone would be doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice ground here. Quite a big intense. And a few little embankment spaces, some of them in the sun, some of them in the shade, a few trees, and right here in the grandstand behind the, the bowler's arm, of course. Grandstand here as well. Looks like it's going to be Karen Bay right out of the pace and coming to the attack now. Of course, he got three for four of his four opens in Sydney University 20 against Hawkesbury. Two weeks ago, Sydney University 7 for 142, Hawkesbury 9 for 109. So they know how to bowl teams out. Well, 20 overs, 20 overs, 9 for 109. That's low run rate as well. And Jaden uh, Simmons on strike now, two take. Flips it off the pads comfortably to that man at deep square leg for an easy single. Absolutely fires it in here, the fielder. Another single here. Fairfield Liverpool doing nice work. These big games sometimes are outside of Liverpool good start. Um, it makes the other team a little bit nervous. Generally, you can get a wicket within the first four overs, so within that power play, as you said, you can definitely put some pressure on, yep. especially if you're looking for the instant run out, of course, the other side is batting team on those. And this one on a pretty good length, but pushed you to the offside for a single. It's uh, Nick Barrowland's offside that time. Matt Mears will be joining us shortly. <laughs> Hopefully green there, mate. <laughs> so, good stuff here by Fairfield Liverpool. It's going to be Jaden Simmons back on strike. And jersey number 77. Here goes Kate again. Oh, and he's bowled on. He's played it on. Tried to go for the big point, but it's taken it the middle stump. Got a match onto the middle pin and Simmons is gone. Her ball in there by Kate to get their first bucket here in Sydney University. And Fairfield Liverpool, 122 on the third. Fantastic work by, uh, by Kate, I must admit. I don't think that shot was quite there to go across, yep. across the stump. Probably would have been safer going straight down the ground and straight back over the bowler. Unfortunate ending, but. A lot of 
looks like it's going to be Vikram Sharma that comes and looks at down and using a Alright, so look, again, <laughs> minor minor fiddling going on here. I'll take over here. This is going to be the Georgia show now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're good to go. So they move the sight screen again, and it will be Yuvraj Sharma on strike. Of course, if you are on Frogbox now, you can probably hear us coming through on the YouTube vision. So I hope you enjoy the commentary here. We just had to quickly set that up. And here goes Salesman again. Beautiful drive down the ground, but sharp fielding there by Salesman. And uh, no run. So what do we got here? 
one for 29 in the fourth over. Last over of that power play. Great conditions here, 25 degrees. And a little bit of wind, but if, probably if there wasn't wind, it would be two or three degrees hotter. Mm. So sometimes it can be a uh, bit of a reprieve there. Here goes Salesman again. Nice rhythm of the right arm bowling. And Sharma's gone for this one. But it's only going to be a single as he drives it to wide mid on for one run. The left hand, right hand combination, Georgia, always a... Uh, Interesting thing with the, the batting side, getting the fielders moving around as well. Get the fielders moving around, you're moving the sight screen, even yep. the umpire might have to make slight adjustments, bowler has to make some adjustments. I mean, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's annoying for everybody, but it doesn't always pay off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Carruthers on strike on 15. And he's gone for this one. It's an absolute ripper of a shot. That's all the way for six. It's over that cow corner area, but it was a genuine cricket shot there. Beautiful drive mm. with some good technique. And Nick Carruthers is moves into the 20s now. This is a good start here by Fairfield Liverpool. That's for sure. Such a nice shot. It was so yeah. smooth. It wasn't like a slog to cow corner, yeah. was it? It was an actual well, nice drive. It wasn't drive. throwing the kitchen sink at it. It was a, this technique will help. Yep. It'll be fine. One for 36, one left in the fourth. Here goes Salesman again. And he's cracked this one, and that's going to be four as well into that mid-wicket area. Two bounces over the picket fence, and the man on the hill retrieves the ball. And all of a sudden, it's one for 40 after four overs. This is a great start now. All right, now we're picking up the pace a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Bit like you're driving on the way. Oh. <laughs> oh ow, that hurt. <laughs> Which was uh, extremely good, I thought. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't jump in and save it now. So it's going to be <laughs> Devlin Malone now, who the licorice all-sort medium pacer. He's um, a good bowler, that's for sure. You hardly ever see him really get hit around. He's quite short, but he knows how to put it on the spot. It's going to be Yuvraj Sharma on strike. So he's on seven. Nick Carruthers on 25 of the 40 runs. He's done a great job. So here goes Devlin Malone now. As he just uh, gets his field set, of course, you can get more players out on the fence now. This is a real short one to start. It stayed low, and it's going to be a single to the man on the fence there at that mid-wicket area. One for 41. No, good start by uh, Fairfield Liverpool. Starting to pick up the pace now as well. As, as we said, the power play is over as well. So more people are back on the boundary. Probably the safest. Actually, almost everybody is on the boundary. Yeah, they've really point. got them out on the fence, <laughs> haven't they? Yep. Okay. It's more like, here, have a go. We'll, we'll easily, uh, we'll take the one. We'll let you have the one. But uh, yep. we're really testing you for the boundary. Carruthers has danced down the wicket. He gets a little... Squeezy single to that man in close on the 45 degree angle. They will get one, so obviously Malone's going to try and slow things down here for this Fairfield Liverpool side. And uh, he doesn't muck around, he runs in and bowls his overs pretty quick. Oh, and this one's beaten outside the off stump. A little bit of swing away there from Malone. Great ball, getting a bit of movement there with the breeze here at. University Oval, here goes Malone again. This is a full toss and Sharma has absolutely slammed it for six. Onto the hill, over the picket fans. What a great shot. And there's a few Fairfield Liverpool fans that have made the trip out today. Loving the in the crowd. One for 48 in the fifth. Here goes Malone again. Sharma moves into double digits. And this one, good length. Just pushes it into the offside for no run. So Malone ripping through this over, even though he's got hit for a six as well. This one a little bit shorter. Played away to backward of point for no run. So five overs gone here in this quarter final. Fairfield Liverpool, one for 48. And uh, so definitely I think Fairfield Liverpool 
on top here. Mm. Mind you, it could be a high-scoring game. And uh, but we definitely need to start. There needs to be some wickets taken now. Yeah. Because these two are getting far too comfortable working together. We see we can see it from Nick Carruthers as well on 28 run, 26, 28 runs. Yep. Can't see that far. <laughs> I think it's 26. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So obviously starting to get a lot more comfortable with the feel of the ball. The feel of the ball. We understand the pitch now. So now is the time to, again to take some crucial wickets. All right, so we'll pass it over to Matt Mears. He set himself up for the next five <laughs> overs. Take it away. Well, thank you, Kiwi Mick. Thank you, Georgia. Uh, fun when you start the day in Brisbane, but you end up here at University Oval number one, calling the action. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll forgive me all, uh, but I'm still catching up. <laughs> With uh, delivery coming in from the northern end and all just mixed back just a little bit towards the stumps, the batter... Uh, is uh, a bit disappointed they didn't put that one away. That's uh, 5.1 overs here. One for 48. If you just tuned in, you're listening to Triple H's coverage here of the Kings Grove Sports Centre. T20 Cup quarterfinal action. Comes in again, and this one's kept low. Hits the pad, tried to hoik it away to the leg side, but uh, out to the fielder there at backward point. No run. Uh, now that we're all set up here, we give you some scores from around some of the other games out at Coogee Oval, Georgia. The, the, old, the other part of the old universities. Mm -hmm. University of New South Wales, three for 17 after five. So the Randy Peets there on top with the ball. Um, give you some of those other scores momentarily as uh, Keita comes in right on round the wicket and uh, it's pushed out into the offside. The fielder will collect it there at cover. They'll pick up another single, one for 49 there as Nick Carruthers moves to 27. Uh, the other games going on, our local uh, Gordon side, one point, uh, 5.2 overs gone there out at Marylands Park, taking on Parramatta, one for 34. They are, and in the other game at Hurstville over St George, batting first, one for 39 off five. So... All games pretty evenly poised. The Keita comes in now to Sharma and he pushes this one down the ground to the man at long on. They pick up another single there and that brings up the half ton here. One for 50 here in the sixth over. Oh, hey, sorry. Right, didn't, it? I didn't recognize you behind the as a few more spectators rock up, you might be hearing the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Got to love that good old effects, Mike, just uh, lazily sitting there. Capturing everything. Keita comes in to Carruthers, and that's uh, pushed out through the vacant mid-wicket area. Good work by Malone there, coming in off the cow corner boundary. Could have been two there, but he really got his uh, groove on. Cuts it down to another single. Carruthers moves to 28. One for 51 here. One delivery left in the sixth. We might have to move that uh, effects mic shortly. <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> it did very well until they sat there. Ah, uh, well. As Akita comes in, slow ball, but it's nicked down parts the keeper in Cummins. Well fielded there on the boundary by uh, the students as it goes back through to the keeper. The six overs gone. One for 53. Sharma on 17. Carruthers on 28. How was your flight? Oh, it was great. You, you want my whole story from this morning where I uh, rock no, I'm up. Just, rock I'm, up. Just, I'm well, just asking I, I, how the flight was. was. The flight was fine. Okay. The getting to the airport part was the problem. Uh -huh. When I turn up uh, two hours before my flight to the train station and find out all the trains have been cancelled for the day. Oh, good job. <laughs> and then the rail replacement bus was at a different station altogether. Oh, boy. <laughs> As uh, Malone comes into the attack from the southern end, it's high, it's up. Oh, what a catch! What a catch by the students. He's tried to go down the ground, Carruthers. He's looked very good for his 28 so far, but Devlin Malone, he's just known for having those changes of pace, those little in-duckers and out-duckers. It's gone the outside edge of the bat, and it's gone straight up to the edge of backward point. Good diving catch there, Georgia. 
two wickets down now here for Fairfield Liverpool as they try and set a total. Look, did amazing work to make sure that we kept the ball in hand. Everybody knows, well, especially cricketers, when you go for that dive, your elbows hit the ground, there is the possibility that the ball could pop out and unfortunately still be, still be live. So fantastic work to maintain that, to hold it and to take that wicket, a crucial wicket at this point. Yeah, they've gotten off to a good start here. Carruthers, he is the danger man. Mm. Um, so I said for him to go now for 28. They'll be very happy with that one. The new man for Fairfield Liverpool is um, Ornowski, the captain. Striding out to the cr crease, the right arm batter at number four. But um, yeah, it was an ordeal. But my plane landed half an hour early, so oh okay, that that does help. And they got me here <laughs> just in time, so <laughs> we helped. could set up all the equipment. So well, as Anunsky faces his first delivery from alone, and it uh, goes down to uh, a man fielding there at long on. They pick up a single. He's off the mark, one for fifty-four. But yeah, so it landed in half an hour early, and I got here in time so we could uh, set up the old. Uh, we can set up the old mixer. I hope you're enjoying the uh, coverage on Frogbox as well. As Malone there ducks out of his follow-through, but uh, Singh and Ornonski can still get through for the quick single. So two for 55 here halfway through the uh, seventh over. As Malone gets through his overs quickly, doesn't he? As this one's pushed down the ground. Great oh, save, though. Well fielded. Inside the circle, Jordan Gauchi there at short cover. I like to think it's the shirt number, <laughs> mainly because I wear number 56 as well. <laughs> I, I, th I thought it was Mitchell Stark's number. Is, uh, it's, it's, it's comes again. Shirt. Oh, a miss there by the keeper. Ornonski was out of his crease. It goes for four buys. It's all happening here now. It always seems to do that when when uh, Devil and Malone comes into the attack, whether it's wickets or runs. But mm. uh, he is down the crease there. Just gets a little bit of movement, gets past the outside edge, but it beats the keeper. Four more to the total. Said one for 59 here. Last delivery in the seventh as uh, just played nicely along the ground out to the man sweeping at cow corner. Pick up another single. Two for 60 now, off seven. The crowd's starting to pick up a little bit around the ground as well, from what I can see. If you passes by, maybe seeing the uh, the cricket ball go flying and wondering <laughs> what, what what's happening over there. Well, just hoping that it doesn't come flying yeah, in their <laughs> direction. And, uh... <laughs> hoping they don't have to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> maybe pop on down, have a bit of a look at, uh, at, at what's happening, what's the score, and you no know, fantastic weather for it as well. How else would you rather be spending your Sunday? Well, as I said, I flew from another state to, to make sure I was here I mean, on this call. Maybe we shouldn't ask non-sporting non <laughs> fans that question. Because <laughs> I, could, I could think of a few things they might be saying. But hey, sports fan, take it. Here we go as uh, Keita continues from the northern end. And Orensky uh, just pushes this one down the ground for another single. Just ticking it over nicely here, Fairfield Liverpool. Nornski moves to three. Two for 61. First ball of the eighth. Pretty sure that's my batting average at this point. <laughs> at, least you've, at least you've got a batting average. I haven't even played a game this season, so... Oh, I mean, from my, my season, like, from last year. I, have, <laughs> oh, I, okay. I can't play till after surgery, so... <laughs> oh, for that good delivery there. Just push for the man at backward point. No run. Yes, well, we do know that, yeah... Mm. The, uh, the the Sydney you know, the newly Sydney University Cricket Club women's I know missing you out on the field. Maybe not my jokes, but <laughs> <laughs> the opposition batsman maybe not missing you so much. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I miss being in slips and giving them a hard time. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you're lucky to get in the slips. Just got to have fast reflexes. As, uh, comes into Sharma now and has pushed off the panty nicely. Soft hands. Long side of the wicket there to the west. That is a big boundary we're That's playing huge. right on the uh, we're playing right on that eastern edge of the block. Maybe there's one pitch there. I'm not a I'm not a pitch connoisseur like one Shane Evans. Mm. He is an umpire if you didn't know. Is he? He is. Huh. Okay. Um, but uh, obviously learn something new every day. Eh? Obviously he's umpiring right. somewhere here today <laughs> that he's that he's not joining us here at Triple H. He gives me the rundowns of whichever games he's doing. <laughs> oh, you're not the only one. As uh, Anonsky drives this one through the covers. 
It, it beats the man there coming across. He will pull it back inside the boundary, but they do pick up another two. He moves to five, two for 64 here as we get towards the end of the eighth over. Yeah, Shane, I'm surprised we haven't got an update where he's umpiring today. Mm, someone, someone's going to cop one. Gonna gonna get that message sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's probably listening. I hope not. <laughs> oh. I, I was. I must admit, I was. I was listening in the car on the way here. Oh, okay. Was okay. very nice. Thank you to the tuning now. As it comes in again, again. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a response on the leg side. Uh, I wouldn't recommend leaning too far back uh, on these chairs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As it moves along, two for 65 here. <laughs> One ball left in the eight. Now it. Oh, gee. Oh, my gosh. Well, it is nice to be back here at Sydney University Oval number one. Nice little position here up in the grandstand next to the uh, the old frog box. Froggy. As Singh comes in and pushes that one. They look for one, but uh, maybe just hit a little bit too hard. Comes back to the keeper. So we finished nine overs here. Two for... Sorry, we finish eight overs here. The extras are nine. Two for 65 with uh, Sharma on 19. Anointiki is on six. If you have just tuned in, thank you very much for listening to us here on Triple H Sports, Triple H 100.1 FM, or through Frogbox here via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube page. We do thank you to wherever you're listening, watching, however you're uh, consuming your cricket here. It is Kings Row Sports Centre. Quarter final action at University Oval, number one, the home side, Sydney Uni, taking on Fairfield Liverpool. Uni, they finished undefeated in the uh, pool stages, hosting this quarterfinal. Fairfield Liverpool had to win them through an elimination final last week. There's a uh, change here from the southern end, and it's just pushed to the man at cover. It's Hugo Akita coming back into the attack here from the uh, southern end. First ball, dot delivery. So a moment. Usually when we're, we've had the old Akita here, he's had his own little bit of following. They don't seem to be down here today, unfortunately, for the young man. Too far? Well, he's a, he, it's his home team. I know, but for others? <laughs> I don't know. Is the next delivery just played to the man at backward point? No run. I don't know, but we've, when, we've, when we've been here at uh, University Oval Number 1, usually he gets a bit of a cheer from the, uh, the decent little attendants here that's uh, made their way here on a Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. in again. Third delivery here of this ninth over. And this one again is played out to that man at short cover, no run. Good bowling here in these middle overs. Just trying to uh, build some run rate pressure. Short field field Liverpool. They've got off to a good start, but they'll want to make sure they don't get bogged down in these middle overs. But it's been a good over for Mikita so far. Comes in again here from the southern end, the grandstand end, and again can only find that man at backward point, no run. I have missed the sound of leather on Willow. I have missed it so much. I thought much. you were about to say something else then. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it is one of those distinctive sounds, isn't it? It really uh, is. You know that you're in. You know that you're, uh, you know that it's, it's at least spring. Got a cloud in the sky here at University Oval as again just picks up a bit off the wicket this one to That had a huge kick. Looked like he just maybe ran his fingers over it mm. or something, didn't he, Georgia? And it's just leaped up off this uh, fresh pitch here at uh, University number one. Maybe cross seam as well. It can generally kick up if you uh, bowl cross seam. Comes in again. What is he pushes this one down the ground. You hear the crack through the effects, Mike. And uh, Kieran Tate cleans this one up. Down in front of the grandstand, he gets a nice little uh, applause here. As uh, that finishes, nine overs here. Two for 66. Sharma is on 19. Adonski there is on seven. Akita's two overs just costing six runs, so he has always a very handy bowler for the university students in this form of the game. So it's a Kiwi Mick following up with those uh, viewing numbers on YouTube, so we do thank you for uh, 
having to put up with us, so <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but uh, as I said, I think any any good game on Frogbox, it's great to have the commentary here. We're here for Triple H one hundred point one FM. Follow us on our socials: Triple H Sport, Facebook, Instagram, and X. If you uh, want to hear from more of okay. where we're going to be, as Malone comes back into the attack for over number ten from the northern or number two oval end, as uh, Anoinsky just pushes this one out to cow corner for a single. But yeah, make sure you follow us on our socials, Triple H Sport. Uh, you can find out where we'll be. Hopefully, we'll be out calling some women's cricket Yo! next Sunday as uh, Malone comes in again to sing and he pushes this one out on to the cover man there sweeping another single to the total we'll have to talk about that we'll have to have a little produ mini production meeting after this one and find <laughs> out where we're going to go but uh, we do like to call the women's competition when there is a break in the men's as uh, the next one gets pushed down the ground he's into a bit of a gap they'll look for two but uh, good w good work down there from the man at long on cut to back to just a single there are some good there are some good options next week Maybe you could even uh, talk to some of your sources, George. There's the next one here from Sings <laughs> Push Down to uh, Long Off. They'll pick up another single. It's nice that you think I have sources. Well, I don't know. Well, I said there's, there's plenty of good women's cricket on, including the WBBL kicks off next Thursday, weekend. Isn't yeah. it? Thursday night. Thursday night, yeah. Double header on Sunday at North Sydney Oval. I'll be there Thursday night. I will be too, as this one's pushed a bit softer by Anonsky, but again, good running. By that man at long on to uh, cut it off to a single. Who is that down there? It is Damien Mortimer, jersey number 60. Covering a lot of metres at that western <laughs> side, just towards the scoreboard. A lot of metres to cover as Singh again just pushes this one. But a uh, bit more wheat bix on that one as it uh, picks up for a single. That's 10 overs gone here at University Oval halfway through. <laughs> The uh, Fairfield Liverpool side, 2 for 72, uh, with Monoinsky um, on 10, Sharma's on 12, Malone's 1 for 17 off his 3, and to take you through the next 5 overs, Kiwi Mick Reinish. Thank you, Matt Mears. So, interesting game here at 2 for 72 after 10, and Luke Onorowski, the captain, out there, he got 87 in that win last week, of course. So, probably their best informed batter. And it looks like William Selzman is going to switch ends again. So he's rotating the ends that he's bowling from, keeping the batters guessing. Yuvraj Sharma on 22, Luke Onorowski on 10. And Sharma's look quite good out there. Nick Carruthers also batted quite well. They've just brought the field up a little bit here. All standing right on that 30 metre circle. Now, in fact, they're going to drop one of them back now. And Damien Mortimer, as he goes down to a very wide third man area. And they've brought the square leg up to right on the circle. So here goes Salesman again. Bowling to Sharma, who's on 22. Full toss, he's absolutely cracked it. And he's caught. He's caught by the man in that deep cover position. The home fans love that one. Sydney University have just worked their way back into this match beautifully. Sharma's gone for 22, and it's 3 for 72. Look, exactly what the, uh, what the doctor ordered. We needed another wicket had to be taken in order for, to, alle to alleviate some pressure on, uh, on the bowling team, that's for sure. Fantastic work by the students, by Sydney University, to take the wicket as well. Looks quite frustrated, I must admit. I mean, yep. <laughs> no, no one walks off the field happy that they got out, that's for sure. Well, I said, I think he, um, there was a couple of good pressure overs there from Akita, then from Alone. The, mm. the run rate had sort of been uh, creeping down. It had been some tight bowling. So I said, yeah, you get that full toss, but he's hitting towards that long boundary that we keep talking about. Uh, towards the, the, the scoreboard there and uh, I tell you this isn't the only place that there's some wickets falling uh, out at Coogee Oval Union New South Wales 4 for 25 off 8 overs there against the Randy Peets and St George playing Penrith out at Hurstville St George batting first 5 for 52 in the 10th yeah low scoring game so it's going to be Mansuk Singh to take strike he's right handed batter as well with the sky blue pads on here goes Selzman again 
the right arm up. And that's almost a Yorker length, but he pushes it nicely out for a single to that man in that short cover position. So Luke Onorowski now is going to be a key man for the rest of the innings, the captain. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to uh, bat some time here and uh, make sure he's the one at the end of the innings. They'll need a batsman that's nice and set. And uh, we'll be able to clear the pickets, they, but they just said there's been some good bowling here, making sure that they're making these fairfield Liverpool batters hit towards that long side. They said it, it's just an easy hit towards that short leg side boundary. Salesman to Onorowski. Oh, and that's a nice port. Just moved away a little bit off the pitch, but he will pick up a cheeky little single into the onside. So important to keep that scoreboard ticking over. It's uh, 3 for 74 in the 11th over. I wonder what sort of a score they'll be looking for. Maybe 150, I think. Uh, 150, 160, particularly yep. if they can keep some wickets in hand towards the end. But as I said, it has been some good bowling so far in these last sort of four or five overs. It's just kept that run rate down. So they, they, they need to be trying to find uh, some gaps and, and run hard. Singh has absolutely advanced down the wicket and missed it. It goes through <laughs> to the keeper. So Salesman beats him that time. Tell you what, if he hit that, might have been coming up to the commentary box for a classic catch, not by me. <laughs> well, George is out. More like a classic finger. duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just protect the equipment. I could, I, I'm sure a I could do classic drop a to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> drop and roll. <laughs> like a fire. <laughs> All right. Stop, drop and roll. Stop, drop and roll. I can stick one hand out. It just might hurt. <laughs> So Selzman again. And he's bowled a middle stump. That's a beauty. Knocks off both the bales. The crowd love that one again. This is good bowling here by Selzman. Sydney University here showing how good they are, winning, being unbeaten in those rounds. And all of a sudden now, it's four for 74. Singer's gone for one. Don't know if that's what they wanted for him, unless they've given him the license to go out there and try and fix some of their run rate problems over the last four overs. But yeah, trying to hit to that long boundary, going towards the leg side, uh, wasn't much risk versus reward there. And uh, I said another one down here for Fairfield Liverpool. So Yuva Nishke is the new batter at the crease. As uh, Mansuk Singh shakes the head as he walks off, disappointed with that one. Uh, of course, Fairfield Liverpool got off. They were none for 40 after four, but they've only got what another 34 runs off about just under seven overs after that. So it's under a run of ball, if I do my maths correctly, which I think I have. I didn't, th I didn't think you two were doing maths today. I'm not. <laughs> I was listening in the car on the way okay. here. Okay. I'm not. Another interested fan, <laughs> no, Joe. <joking. laughs> <laughs> What a many. Here we go. Here goes Salzman again now to Yuva Nishke. Right-handed batter. God, oh, that's a great shot off the pads. Will it beat the man on the fence? No, it won't. And they'll only get a single as well. Good fielding there on the boundary. 11 overs gone. Fairfield Liverpool. Four for 75. Yeah, another good over there for the students. Um, Salzman two for 23 off his three overs so far. But, yeah, that wicket pressure just uh, keeps affecting that run rate. As I said, it, it's been a good last five overs or so by the students. They've uh, been able to keep those runs down. And now now being four wickets down with still nine overs to go, it's uh, do they just keep swinging from the hip, hopefully that it comes off? Or, or, do, or are they preparing themselves to... Uh, so they have to do it the hard way, really. Uh, try and hit the gaps, run hard, and, um, and and build their way to 20 overs. It'll be interesting to see uh, what route they go down. So Karen Tate back into the attack. Another bowler who's bowled from both ends today. And it's going to be Yuva Nishke on strike. Right-arm bowler to right-handed batter. And a swing and a miss outside the off stump. Quite busy at the crease, Nishke. He's... Quite a, quite a bit of movement there as the bowler's running in, adjusting the uh, footwork and everything like that. And, uh, Karen Tate, a quite an experienced man for this Sydney University team. 
as he gets to the top of his mark again at the northern end of the ground. Runs in now. And that stayed low. And eventually they're going to pick up a single into the onside there. Referee, oh sorry, umpire says there was a little bit of bat. A little bit bat and pad, I think, on that one. Four for 76. And uh, Tim Cummins, the captain of this side, fielding it on the 45 degree angle around the corner on the leg side. Here goes Tate. Nice shot into the onside. They have a shy at the bowler's end, but it's missing the stumps. Luke Oronofsky moves through to 12. And Yuva Nishke on two. Four for 77 in the 12th over. Kieran Tate, one for nine off 1.3 overs. And he runs in again now. Oh, and this one's just missed the stumps. They're going to pick up a bye. And they fire it into the bowler's end. It wasn't too far away. It's all happening here at University Oval. This kept a bit low, didn't it, Giorgio? It just sort of shot through. Kept low, and then when it was thrown, it kicked up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is going the way we expected. So the captain, on a, Oronofsky, on strike, scoring 87 in that elimination final win last week. Drives us into the covers for a single again. Not quite finding those gaps like they were at the start. But he will pick up one. And it's four for 79. One ball left in the 12th. I'm going to make a score prediction for this. Yep. For this innings. It's currently 79 at 11.5 overs. 79 runs. I'm thinking 162. Okay. Oh, this is a nice leg glance as he just whips it off the pads beautifully there, does Nishke. And after 12 overs here, in fact, it's a no ball and a free hit. And the captain, or Oronofsky, on strike as well. This Anything could happen here. This could end up in the library, wherever that is. No, in front of the school. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or will that be a huge hit? more likely to end up in the uh, the building behind us. <laughs> it's a fancy one. So, free hat. He smashes this into the onside and they will pick up a boundary behind square leg. So, making the most of that free hit there, the captain Oronofsky moves through to 17 and after 12 overs, Fairfield Liverpool, 4 for 85. Do some round the grounds for you in the other games in progress out at Coogee Oval. Uh, University of New South Wales batting first. They're 5 for 34 in the 11th over against the Randy Peets. Um, out at Marylands Park, Gordon batting first 2 for 70 off 11 versus Parramatta. And at Hurstville Oval, St George batting first 5 for 73 halfway through the 13th against Penrith. So Hugo Akita back in the attack. He's bowled quite well early on. Right arm medium pacer. As Devlin Malone just comes from the fence up to that 30 metre circle. And nice shot down the ground. They will pick up a comfortable single as Malone races across into that mid on area to retrieve it. Four for 86. I said, yeah, it's been a good spell so far from Hugo Akita. Um, only seven runs off his 2.1 overs. Uh, we've seen him before. He, he does this good job in the middle of the overs. And this time he's just beating him with the length. Oronofsky was sort of halfway forward and halfway back. And just hits it back to the bowler for no run. Yeah, he just has those little change-ups. Just makes it hard for him to get away. Particularly now, as I said, we've finished the, uh, the power play now. They, it was overs 11 and 12 where they had only the two men back. So he can come in, in this, just in this time of the innings. just makes it hard to get away to the boundary. Oronofsky on 17. Oh, and he's gone for it. And nearly a run out at the strikers end. They will pick up a single. Came off the pad and just dropped at his feet. Akita racing through. But the uh, batter's a little bit too quick between the wickets that time. 
Yeah, well, I said he was looking towards that short lakeside boundary, wasn't he? Uh, he's quite short today. <laughs> it's tempting. <laughs> it is very short today towards that eastern side. As I said, we're playing pretty much on the eastern side, basically the last pitch on the on the wicket block, and it's uh, maybe just a, a 50 metre hit. So it is very tempting, but as I said Hugo Akita's bowling really well, trying to make him play on the offside. Nishke on strike, and he's timed that one nicely through the offside. He'll pick up a man, uh, sorry, a single. To the man on the fence there, Ooh. and it's a wobbly old bounce that's nearly taken out the keeper, who's just wearing a floppy white hat. <laughs> Very descriptive here on Triple H. Well, th when I friends, want to be. Our friends, at, our friends on Frogbox would, would be seeing what a great floppy hat it would be. Yeah, wouldn't mind one of those. I got, I got a spare one. I'll bring it for you next week. Okay. <laughs> Gonna look the part, right? Oronofsky has climbed into this one, picks up half a dozen. It's almost into the road here. Well up high on that embankment. That is a great shot by the captain who moves through to 24. And it's 4 for 94. One ball left in the 13th. Came yeah. off the brick wall. We might need to check it. Yeah. The wall, not the ball. I, <laughs> the I, I think we need to check the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty safe hit there with, with uh, that short boundary. Is that they're trying to make him hit the offside. No one at cow corner in front of the... Uh, the light post there, so mm. I said if you can get it in that area, or even if it doesn't go, there's no one there to catch it. Last ball to the 13th. Here goes Akita again. And a shout for LBW, but the umpire says no. Nearly a run out at the non-striker's end. It's all happening here at University <laughs> Oval. <laughs> 13 overs gone. I've had my wheat bucks. <laughs> After watching that all-black win, and it's 4 for 95. Had to throw that in once. Always. Mate. It wouldn't be a Kiwi Met call without it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if they lose, I don't mention it. <laughs> oh, no, and then we bring it yeah, up. Then we will. <laughs> it's who gets in first. They should have bets on what over will happen. <laughs> well, this time it was over 13 oh, in the first gam innings. Gamble responsibly, kids. If Shane was here, I would have said it straight away. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can, we, can we not mention him? He's not here. <laughs> so, Devlin Malone to bowl again. Wait till he go wa goes and watches the live stream. <laughs> Good matchup here. Malone to Oronofsky. This is pretty short, and he's given it a good whack into the onside. They'll pick up one, but they're not going to take on the fielder. Good throw into the keeper there. So just the single. Oronofsky onto 25 now. Yeah, he said he can drop a little bit short. He's got the protection on that leg side. It is the bigger boundary. And so they've, they've got some of the, the quickest and most able out there fielding so they'll be looking for two but only one yeah Nishke this time just pushes it into the offside for no run so Malone 3.2 overs one for 18 again economical as always as he just rattles through the over oh and that's an awkward length they're going to pick up a single behind the keeper on the leg side to that man on the 45 degree the captain and Tim Cummins He's a bit like a Ravindra Jadeja, just gets through his over so fast. That's a short one. Aronofsky hits it out to the man on the fence there at deep cover for a single. This isn't even the fastest I've seen a bowler get through their overs. It's get up through, there. Get through there. Well, it is one of them. Yeah. Oh, and this one's moved away a little bit. Through to the keeper who drops it. No nick on that though. So one ball left in the 14th. Fairfield Liverpool 4 for 98. Looking for the upset here in the quarterfinal. Who knows what's going to happen in this match. As Malone completes the over. And shy at the non-striker's oh. end. That maybe could have been a run out if the bowler was behind the stumps there, Matt Mears. But they will get the single. 14 gone, 4 for 99. Yeah, has been another good over. Malone finishes his four overs, one for 21. That's why we know he's so dangerous in this form of the game. But yeah, this thought he just a little bit of a sleep there. If he could have got back behind the stumps, it was a risky single. That man is inside the 30-yard uh, circle, quite close at short cover. But um, yeah, fortunately for Fairfield Liverpool, the radar was not on uh, from the, the students' fielder, but it said that that 150, they're going to really have to start going for it now if they want to be able to get that. They, they, they sort of be needed to look at like sort of eight or nine and over from here on these last six overs of the innings. 
So Karen Tate, again, switching ends. So Yuva Nishke on seven, Luke Oronofsky on 26. Nishke on strike, full toss, hits it into the offside. That'll bring up the 100 for Fairfield Liverpool. And a misfield out on the boundary. They come back for two. They were thinking about three as well. What a throw. And Ooh. it's uh, four for 101. Wish I had an arm like I was going to say, I'm like, ouch. <laughs> That, was that, that bent the keeper's hand. He's a good 70 metres or so. Insane. That is a long boundary. Right, I need, I need throwing lessons. From That's him. a massive boundary out on that side, isn't it? I, I have one, but it doesn't work like that still. <laughs> <laughs> so Nishke on nine now. And he's popped it in the air and he's caught. So he's deceived him there, Tate. Nice delivery. Jordan Gouch, he takes the catch. A real sitter, really. Straight to the man. All of a sudden, Fairfield Liverpool in the 15th over, 5 for 101. Yeah, another good piece of bowling there. They've, they've learnt very quickly here, I think, the students, that these off-pace deliveries, a fresh wicket for the year, haven't had much tendon, been tended to, been all sort of roughed up during the AFL season. But uh, this year, they'll bite a little bit more, and that's what's happened there. He's, he's seen it a bit short. He wanted to go for it, but just, yeah, that slower ball deception's just made him pop it up to that man in there. That number fix, 56, you'll have to see if that's your shirt, George, and he's not nicked it from you. Um, uh, no, no, my, mine, are sit, mine are sitting in my bedroom, ready to go. i got the uniform, looks amazing. I've just got to find pads to match the colour. Oh, okay. <coughs> I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure someone will be able to sort that out. Oh, there, I've, I've, I've already spoken. We're, we're good. We're, we're good. good. I'm just looking for a polo shirt now. <laughs> I, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, there should be some downstairs. We'll see what we can do for you. But, uh, but yeah, no, some, and more good bowling there from the students. But, yeah, now five for 101 here. I said they, they really need something to go their way now. Um, but, said again, see some great bowling here. Kieran Tate, two for 18 off 2.2 as well. He's, he's been... Uh, He's been another good one here for the students. So Jake Langdon, the new man at the crease, left-handed batter, wearing the sky blue pads as he takes guard now. Very descriptive. Yep. <laughs> so it is an eclectic uh, version of um, some colour palettes here. Yeah. I kind of like the blue pads, though. Yep. It's like New South Wales breakers. Here goes Not Tate. True. And Langdon... Guides it away to third man for an easy single to get off the mark. So Luke Oronofsky on 26, a key man here. They really need to get at least 150, I reckon, to make a good game of it. Yeah, well, it's down to Oronofsky now. He needs to, keep, he needs to find the short boundary again, and probably four or five occasions, I think. So here goes Tate. The right arm bowler, of course. And Oronofsky just drives this down the ground. The on drive for an easy single again. Doing the fielding there was Ryan McElduff, who's quite a good batter for the Sydney University team. He normally sometimes bowls spin too, McElduff, doesn't he? But he, we haven't seen him yet. Well, said, there hasn't really been anybody that's uh, gone the journey yet, have they? They haven't mm. got need to go into that sort of sixth or seventh bowling option. So Langdon on strike, one off one. Oh, and he's yorked him, but he will squeeze it out for a single. So he did pretty well there, Langdon. That was a good, fast at ball. And he uh, gets one. Five for 104, one ball left in the 15th. Yeah. <laughs> Australia playing Sri Lanka tomorrow night will be a key game in the World Cup as well. So here goes Tate. And again, he's yorked him. He gets the old French cut going. And he's going to get four. It was pretty lucky, but he'll get the boundary there, Aronofsky. He moves through to 31. And after 15 overs, Fairfield Liverpool, five for 108. Over to you, Matt Mears. Thanks, Kiwi Mick. We'll go round the grounds. There's some other interesting scores going on. Kuji Oval, uh, the Bumblebee, 7 for 50 in the 13th <coughs> over, taking on the Randy Peets there. So glad we didn't go and call that one. Um, 
Mary Lance Park, Gordon, two for two for 102 uh, in the 15th against Parramatta. And St George, six for 92 in at the 15th out at Hurstville versus Penrith. So they're the three other games going on. Semi-finals in this competition will be in two weeks' time um, for all the, the four winners of these quarter-finals today. So... We uh, wait with bated breath. We'll, I'm sure we'll find out tonight or tomorrow who the uh, semi-finals will be because it's all it's all some ranking system. So it's not like we can say who's going to play who. So we'll wait for those uh, games and matchups to come out on um, on Play HQ uh, throughout uh, the week as uh, Verma coming back for his third over from uh, the Northern or number two end here of Sydney University Oval and. Just a swing outside off stump from Langdon. That's a not 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 the really the best shot there. Maybe trying to tickle it down to third man Georgia. I think we're just trying to play it safe at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and get something on it. That's how I play. <laughs> <laughs> the ball hits the bat. It's a win. <laughs> it's the small win. It's the small victories that we celebrate. Oh. I'll tell you about one innings I had when I was uh, in England. It was just pure non baseball anti baseball is the next one. Comes in again. He pushes it to the offside. Malone's in there at short cover, but uh, the radar was not on there as they do pick up another single. Langdon goes to three, five for 109. But yeah, my anti baseball mm. of uh, eight off 65 deliveries. Dude. <laughs> Blocking out their spinner so they couldn't drive their hour home. Effingham's such a lovely place. I just thought they'd want to hang around for another 45 minutes or so mm -hmm. to watch me block out their uh, very average spinner. Yeah. As uh, <laughs> Verma comes in again. What a Yorker. Big appeal. But no. A shake of the head from the umpire there at the northern end. Doesn't signal. He's going to say that he got a little bit of bat on it. Lucky there for Fairfield Liverpool. Skipper Anoyski, he moves on to 32. Five for 110 here, halfway through 16. What was it? Eight runs for, what, 60 balls? Yes. Oh, mate. It was great. It was awesome. <laughs> High score, too. As uh, next delivery here for Langdon, he gets it into oh, the offside. Yeah, pick up another single no they they do the uh, the old um i made the i made the uh the twitter graphic i was the oh, second the, top score could second you, top, ooh, top, ooh, second at, top score look at you go 8 or 65 yeah it was uh one of my most proud innings just because of how pissed off the opposition were that just wanted to go home <laughs> that's what we do <laughs> we annoy them <laughs> Well, that's the thing is, is it's like a 45, like, 50-minute drive home. Mm -hmm. Effingham's a lovely place in the world. I just thought they'd like to stay a bit longer. So sounds like a few of my um, innings, I must admit. Well, seeing their 45 over one day is, it's like, you know how bad of a trouble we're in is. This one's gone over the top of the head of the man there, Jordan Gauchi, at short cover. Four much-needed runs there by the skipper. Now, uh... Five for 115 here. One ball left in the 16th. <coughs> but yeah, Swallow the, the fly? The, oh, yes. <laughs> Protein. But, um, yeah, they were going back to Hawley, which is uh, right next to Gatwick Airport. Oh, so yeah, it is. <laughs> so you can hear the... the uh, think about it. You can hear the uh, airplane here. We're not near Gatwick Airport. We're near Sydney Airport. No. Which I just came Never from about guessed. half an hour ago. We know. Was, uh, <laughs> next delivery uh, gets pushed in the, into the onside. They look for two. Good running there from Langdon, backing up at the non-strikers. They get back to two. This is more like it here from the Fairfield Liverpool Lions. 16 overs gone. Five for 117. I said, Unoyowski, he's on 38. Langdon, four. Burma's three overs have cost 23 runs. I just noticed there's a huge pile of sand over there across from where we're sitting. Mm -hmm. Why would you add any more sand to this oval? <laughs> there's still a green patch over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they, got, maybe they got a discount that said, if you get an extra ton, we'll give it to you for free. And it's we just we there must to go. fix it. 
I said, you're going to buy four tons of sand. We'll, we'll, give you fo- we'll give you a fifth ton for free, and it's just sitting there. Maybe they're going to turn it into the sand pit for the crèche or something. I don't know. Is there a crèche here? Mm, it's a uni. You'd, you'd think so. As uh, mm, yeah. Akita comes back for his over number four, and Lang just swipes at it outside the off stump. Big swing, no ding as it goes through the keeper, no run. I don't know, maybe they want to build one. There's some room over there. Between ov- <laughs> ovals number one over and two. Over there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if we can find out during uh, the, the change of innings. As uh, Hikita comes in again and pushes through the offside. Just goes through the hands of the man there at backward point. Goes for four to that shortish boundary there towards the east here. Much needed for, for the Lions. Now they move five for 121 here. Two balls gone in the 17th. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, the laughter there in the effects, Mike. Is uh, one of the probably the students' lower graders trips up the stairs. He is okay. Stairs are hard. <laughs> they are hard. <laughs> the key to comes in along and it's a bit shorter. That keeps low, but he's pushed it well and truly into that offside. A key to a field in his follow through. Another single to the total. Five for 122. Langdon moves to nine. can guarantee his mates will be giving him a hard time for that for the next <laughs> few days at least. Well, at least Frogbox didn't pick it up on the, uh, yeah. on the camera. <laughs> at least Frogbox is still standing. <laughs> said it's going to have to... Uh, it's going to have to do it if the ball comes between that and this. We are protecting our own equipment as a big swipe across the <laughs> line there from Adelski. Trying to find that short boundary. Comes off the inside edge. We'll get fielded there on the boundary. Another single to the total. He moves to 39. Five for 123 here. Two balls left in the 17th. I'll tell you what, it's a little chilly in the shade. And a bit cold. Hopefully a broader jacket. Mine's in the car. Oh, there we go. Keedy comes in now again to Langdon. Again keeps just a little bit low. Down the leg side, takes the pad, will wait for the signal. Yes, it is a leg by. Just keeping a bit low here, Georgia, as the ball gets mm-hmm. a bit softer. Not much, not much happening with the ball as well. We didn't see much movement when it, when we started either. We don't always see it with a, a white ball, I must be honest. But it may just be uh, the pitch playing a few tricks. I think so. Is this the next one comes in again and it's down the leg side. It again keeps low. It'll be five wides though to the total. Keita's has got those hands on hands on the knees. Three point five overs for twenty one. Then does that, but yeah. So I think again, this the keeper had no chance there. It's gone down the leg side again, kept low, mm. and uh, just goes to the boundary. The, I tell you that the Lions they will uh, they will take those with open arms. They will welcome them at all costs. <laughs> Please give us more. <laughs> As uh, Keaty comes in, final delivery of his spell, and it's just, again, pushed out to uh, Jordan Gauchi there at cover. That's the end of Akita's spell. He finishes four overs, no wickets for 27. And with three overs left here, five for 130. So he said if they could get 20 off these last three, they might be able to post something uh, competitive here, Georgia. Definitely 130 runs. Still already quite competitive total. Generally on par with other scores that we've seen as well. So already a good start, but definitely need to pick up the uh, the pace just a little bit more. Get those few extra runs on. Add that more. Add that. Add more pressure on. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> well said, Burma coming in to finish off. Bowl his fourth over and a swipe again across the line from Bonowski and uh, goes off the pad. It will be called a leg of bind, but uh, they're trying to pick up the pace here. See someone who isn't picking up the pace, the Bumblebees. Eight, <laughs> eight for 64 off 15 in their match at Coogee Oval against the Randy Peets. Uh, St. George, six for 103 after 16 at Hurstville Oval mm. against St. George. And uh, Gordon, three for 131 off 17 at Marylands against Parramatta. 
it's, uh, Verma comes in again to Langdon. It's interesting shot there. What was that? <laughs> Takes the hand off and almost trying to take some of the pace off the ball or something. I'm not sure. Well, only... maybe it was up around the handle. Quite possibly. But he does pick up another single. He moves to double figures. He's now on 10. Uh, five for one at 32 here in the 18th over. Interesting to see. We've only used the five bowlers here so far, the students. Mm -hmm. They said McElduff, usually we see him come to the attack. Hasn't been bowled today. Is Again, slower ball. Oof. It's a good change of pace here. And also he was trying to even go, even with this long boundary, <laughs> put it into the hospital here on our here on the western side of uh, University Oval number one. But again, a good change up. I said Kieran Tate and, and Saltzman still have overs to come, so you would assume they'll be bowling overs 19 and 20. But uh, the skipper here, it's been a lone hand with his 40, but you, you would think he'd want to be trying to push this run rate on. Mm -hmm. Only sort of two and a half overs left to go, and again, yeah, he tries to shovel that one onto the onside, but he can only find that man. Well placed there, he's about 10 or so metres inside the boundary. At um, Cow Corner, trying to cut off that second, which he did. So, uh, Onowski, he's now on 41, 5 for 133 here. Two balls left in the 18th. So now, Irma comes in to lane and sit again, just. It's a styled almost <laughs> by the left hander to the man sweeping at cover. They're dealing in singles here, the, the Lions. So it's been a good spell by Shoma so far. 3.5 overs, no wicket for 26. None of the bowlers really getting hit. Which is uh, telling with that scoreboard. So final delivery of his spell. What, what can uh, Odowski do to this one? He goes back in his crease. He goes high. Just over the head of Akita there at backward point. It'll roll to the boundary for four. Much needed boundary here for the Lions. Five for one at 38 here. Two overs left in their innings. Shermer finishes his spell. Four overs, no wicket for 30. That, uh, that ball was one of those where it comes off the bat. And you almost you don't actually know if it's coming towards you or if it's going. It's 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 really sometimes it can be really awkward fielding in certain positions as well because you're sitting there and the ball go like it starts to move, and you almost don't register that it's actually coming your way. Well, he was trying to deposit it into into oval number two, which mm. is the complete opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to feel a little bit for. Uh, here you go, Akita there, but uh, it was only just over the fingertips. But uh, Will Saltzman comes in for over number 19 here from the southern or grandstand end to Langdon. And again, that slower ball. Oh, gets his soccer skills up. Like he's trying out for uh, Sydney FC, but... Uh, Won't be getting the contract, that's for sure. <laughs> he misses the stumps from about a metre away. But... Uh, now we'll jog through for the leg by. Good work there by the number seven, getting getting their skipper and number four back on strike. You would think, though, he'll be trying to set up for that short boundary, Georgia. Mm, definitely, and it's exactly in his wheelhouse as well. He's been playing across stumps a majority of today, even when the ball isn't on leg. Yeah, we'll just see where he gets into position here. Saltzman, though, I'm sure he'll be wise to it. Comes in again, and he does go across his stumps there, does Ornowski, and it's very well played in the end. It kept low, but he's able to find that gap between fine leg inside the circle and square leg back on the boundary. Good placement there. I said it looked like it almost beat him. It kept low, but mm. to be able to pick that gap as well while he's on the move, good shot there by the skipper. I think a wide Yorker might be needed. Yeah, interesting. I Change like, it up. Yeah, I feel like that's the only way that we're actually going to stop stop him from from scoring on the uh, on the leg side. So Saltzman in again. Where will you direct this one? Oh, it's high. Okay, never mind. It's in no ball territory. It will be called a no ball. So I will pick up a single there. I don't know whether Saltzman was uh, trying to go that that wide Yorker, but just. Didn't have the uh, 
didn't have the right direction there, but uh, four fair for Liverpool. They will get the free hit, but they probably would want Ornonski to be on strike. That does mm. bring up his 50 as well, that single. But uh, Langdon now on strike for the, uh, for the free hit. Said he has changed to right arm around the wicket. As they have changed ends, he can change the field. And he flings this one away. Ooh. The crowd's appreciative of that shot. We haven't seen much from him, but uh, Saltz, when he just. He had to go for the stumps there, didn't he, Georgia, with that short boundary to the offside. But he's just been able to pick it up again and get it past that man inside the circle at Fine Lake for four. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where it might work, it might not. And unfortunately, in this situation, it didn't work and was able to get the runs, uh, able to get the four runs as well. But look, it was actually a well-placed ball by both Bowler and by Batsman. It's, it's going to have to make it's going to have to make uh, Saltzman rethink his strategy here. He will stay around the wicket to the left-hander. Again, it's a shorter off-pace delivery. That's probably more where he wanted that last delivery outside the off stump. But all he can do is push it into the offside. The bowler will field it in his follow-through. That brings up the 150 here for the Lions. Five for 150. Two balls left in the 19th. Do you think he tries the uh, the wide Yorker again here, Georgia, and just hope that he doesn't uh, sort of get the, get the waist high fully again? I don't know. I think going too full, obviously, it's it's not going to work. Uh, let's see. We'll see. Comes in again here, and this one is short. Stays down. They will appeal. But I think with with where with where Anonski sort of <laughs> got in the crease. He, uh, he was probably too far down and maybe too far across to give that one. They will give it a leg by. I thought that was on the hip. Was it? It was another one that stayed down, though. Mm. It said it, it is staying down. I'm sure the uh, the Lions bowlers will be watching this with interest. Mm. Going well. I said pace on deliveries probably will go the distance, but it is hard for, uh, particularly with this older ball. For them to for the batters to get it away is final delivery for Saltzman's spell. Almost a free hit for the left-hander, but again he'll just push it out to that man at short cover. He'll jog through for the single. So 19 overs gone here at University Oval number one. Saltzman finishes his four overs. He finishes two for 35, and uh, the Lions five for 152 here after 19. Onowski's on 50, not out. Langdon is on 17. He'll be facing the final over. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Triple H Sports coverage here on Triple H 100.1 FM and on Frogbox via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube page of this Kingsgrove Sports Centre T20 quarterfinal. The Sydney University students, they're taking on the Fairfield Liverpool Lions. The winner will go through to the semi finals in two weeks' time. So big stakes on this one. Kieran Tate will come in to bowl the 20th and final over from that northern or number two oval end here of University Oval number one. His first three overs have gone two for 25. As uh, We're just waiting for that side screen to get right in that just perfect position. This is it the biggest side screen I've seen in my time, Georgia? Okay. <laughs> well, said we've just we've seen bigger side screens. What can I say? They, they have to get it in the right exact space. It's not like Cricket Central or somewhere where it's like about the ho thirty the whole meters back end, long. Yeah. And you, there's definitely no changing the side screen there. As um, Tate comes into Langdon, first ball of the final over, and it's slashed away outside off stump, but it's uh, well fielded by the Malone there, sweeping out on that offside boundary. Picks up a single, five for 153 here. Five deliveries left in this Fairfield Lions innings. I mean, you you got to give it to the to the peeps who are who are moving the sight screen as well. Like, <laughs> yeah, couple, they're doing a good job. Couple of lower graders, give up your Sunday afternoon. Maybe promised a beer at the end, maybe not. Ooh. Said Tate now back over the wicket here to Anarski, and he goes high. Well judged, well taken. He had to go for that one, but it is that long boundary there. 
out towards the side screen here, towards the west. He had to go for it. I would have thought he'd try to go a bit more down the ground, but just pulls it out towards Cow Corner. It was uh, Will Saltzman there, backing up after bowling that over Georgia, mm -hmm. taking the catch there at Cow Corner. Six wickets down now. Nonski goes for 50 even and uh, six for 153 here. Four balls left in the innings. Especially towards like the back end of innings as well. You do, you do anything to get those runs and, and there are wickets still in the shed. There, are, there were six people behind him as well who could easily go on and make some more runs too. So you, got to, you do have to put some, some things on the line, risk a few things, but you know what? It either pays off or it doesn't. Now, unfortunately, this time it didn't pay off. Yeah, nice. Nice applause there for the skipper as he makes his way for 50 as Max Farmer, the keeper, makes his way out at number eight. Four of balls left with Kieran Tate on fire now. Three for 26 here off his 3.2 over so far. I said, where will Farmer target? Obviously, the short side is towards the off. Comes in again, and there's the full toss on the pads. I said they've positioned that man well, but a misfield there by Saltzman after taking that catch. Malone will do the uh, Malone will do the um, pick up the scraps there, but three runs for Farmer off his first delivery, and could have been avoided. Well, could then yeah, just they they had him in there. Sh they had him in there specifically mm. to try cut off the two, but. Mm. I said whether he's just a bit lazy, I don't know. He just the ball or goes underneath the hand and gives away two runs. Potentially, um, just you know, you're aware of your surroundings too. If you think a player is is close by enough to back up, then yeah, you can. They'll they'll back you up. But I just I don't think he realised that there wasn't someone that much closer to him. Good delivery there from Tate. He goes towards that line, that that wide line. Langdon, the batter, he's looking up in, in hope and desperation to the umpire saying, please, it must be outside that blue line. But the umpire's arm stayed down. So nice stop ball there for the students here. Two deliveries left here in this 20 overs. Six for 156, the Lions. Can they get it up to 160? Tate comes in to Langdon and it's driven down the ground, but the man is inside the circle there at mid-off. So they'll give up a single. Farmer will now be back on strike. Three off one delivery. Can he do it again? <laughs> Can he pick up three and uh, <laughs> get them to that 160 mark? He said it has been a good innings, though. He said we, they did bog themselves down, I thought, the Lions in at those back end, in that sort of middle over period. But to be just within one hit of 160 here off the final ball, I think they've dug themselves out of it well. And Farmer goes down. They'll go through, but it'll be a run out there by the keeper. Well done. They tried to run the bye off the last ball. Nice selflessness there from the two. But as I said, Farmer was trying to deposit into that nice building on the other side of uh, Sydney Oval number one. But couldn't get the job done. That is the end of 20 overs here. Kieran Tate finishes three for 30 off his four overs. And the seven for 157 off 20 here. We will give you a... A tail of the tape, then we'll ask Georgia and Mick for their thoughts of the innings. Um, first off, it was Jaden Simmons. He was out bold. Kieran Tate, three off four deliveries. Yuvraj Sama, caught by Jack Attenborough off the bowling of Will Saltzman. Two, 22 off 21 deliveries. One, four, and one, six. Nick Carruthers, he was caught by Tim Cummins off the bowling of Demlin Malone. 28 off 21 deliveries. Two fours and two sixes. Um, Singh, he was bowled by Will Saltzman, one off three deliveries. Nishke, he was caught by Jordan Couchy off the bowling of Kieran Tate, nine off 13 deliveries. Langdon, he was uh, run out there, that nine off 18 deliveries. That was the final ball of the innings. Two boundaries for him, and it was Luke Andronshu, the skipper. He was the pick of the batters. 50 off 41 deliveries, five fours, one six. Caught by Saltzman off the bowling of Kieran Tate. There was 22 extras, 7 for 157 off 20 overs completed here. The, the students bowling, Will Saltzman, 4 overs, 2 for 35. Verma, 4 overs, no wicket for 30. Kieran Tate, pick of the bowlers, 3 
for 30 off his four overs. Devil Malone, miserly as ever, one for 21 off his four. And Hugo Akita, no wicket for 27 off his four. Georgia Kiwi Mick, seven for 127 here. Your thoughts on the on the Lions innings? Is that enough for them to make semi-finals in two weeks' time? Yeah, seven for 157. Don't know. It's a pretty good score. It runs on the board in a, a look quarter final. I'd probably just hit Sydney University to get home, but Oronofsky, great effort. is two fifties in a row in T uh, Twenty cricket, and um, they just slowed it down a bit in those middle overs. But I think one fifty seven is a pretty good score here in in twenty twenties. But I'd um, I'd say if I had to do a Kiwi McViz early on, <laughs> I'd miss this. I'd oh. probably go Sydney University. 60, Fairfield, Liverpool, 40. That's an interesting one, Georgia. Yeah. Obviously, the students know their, their conditions well, but as I said, if the Lions can bowl well and, and protect this long boundary, mm-hmm. they're in with a good shout. Oh, absolutely. And look, I think it's, it's it, you can't judge a pitch until both teams are batted on it as well. So while it may have done one thing for one group and another thing for another, I definitely think it's still going to be close. 157 is a good total. Uh, it's going to be close. I'm calling it. Just that's a, that's a, that's well, we as like, far we, as I'm going. We like good close games, um, and hopefully that's what we're going to be in for here. There is probably going to be some other ones, but we will go through the the uh, around the grounds after this short break here. You're listening here on Triple H 100.1 FM, or you're listening through Frogbox through the Cricket New South Wales uh, YouTube page. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly with the students' chase, 158 to win and get that semi-final spot.
Yes, hello and welcome back to University Oval number one, Triple H Sports coverage here of the Kings Road Sports in the T20 Cup. It's quarterfinal day. And if you're just tuning in, the students here of Sydney University needing 158 to win off 20 overs. That will be coming up very, very shortly. We'll quickly take you around the grounds of the other three quarterfinals being played around Sydney town. First out to Coogee Oval. It is the Bumblebees of Uni of New South Wales taking on Randy Peets. And it's not looking good for the Bumblebees. All out for 75 in 18.2 overs. The best of the bowlers, Jason Ralston for the Randy Peets. 5 for 17 off his four overs. So a big job for the Bumblebees bowlers to do if they want to get into... Uh, the semi-finals in two weeks' time. There's two other quarter-finals going on. First up at Marylands Park, Gordon taking on Parramatta. Gordon batting first, three for 163 off their 20 overs. So Parramatta needing 164 there to make the quarter-finals. And last but certainly not least out at Hurstville over St. George taking on Penrith. St. George, 9 for 130 off their 20 overs, so 131 required for Penrith to uh, make the semi-finals. So that will be in two weeks' time. We'll be covering one of those semi-finals here on Triple H Sport. We do not know which one as yet as these finals are ranked, so we'll have to wait and see when they uh, get when the uh, games get uh, announced on Play HQ either tonight or tomorrow. But... Uh, if you're listening through Frogbox, welcome. Thank you for tuning in via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube page. Um, we normally do a, a radio call from one of these from one of these grounds if we are not on Frogbox as well. So you can ch check out our social media, Triple H Sport, on Facebook, Twitter, and X. We will give uh, details of where we'll be calling over the next few weeks. Next week, hopefully, we'll be at a uh, women's premier cricket game somewhere around Sydney town. We'll have more details about that during the week. But uh, we await both sides here. They will be out very shortly here at Sydney University Oval number one, 158 required by um, the students to make those semi-finals. It will be a difficult task, particularly with uh, Liam yeah. Hatcho. The uh, change in stair. The... Uh, more people yeah, that are, more yeah. people that are uh, getting uh, knocked around by that stair near the effects mics. Apologies for that if uh, any free language came through. But uh, just about to make my point with Liam Hatcher making uh, his return to the Fairfield Liverpool Lions. Uh, New South Wales bowler, BDL bowler with the Stars, I believe, coming to the Sydney Thunder this year. So he'll be a great pickup for them. But he is going to be a monster bowler here in this Fairfield Liverpool Lions side. Um, he needs to do the sort of the job of them alone, go for very little runs off his uh, four overs, take some wickets as well. But uh, as I said, it's a, it's a team. Sydney University don't have Nick Larkin in. They don't have Hayden Kerr in who is injured. But um, as I said, we know some of these batters, the, the, the Damian Mortimers, the Ryan McEldris of the world, Tim Cummins, they will certainly be trying to do the job to make book themselves into that semi-final in two weeks' time. Umpires in uh, Daniel Moran and Beev um, Somolovic make their way out onto the field. Yes, I heard your pronouncing Kiwi Mick of it earlier in the uh, broadcast. But uh, Fairfield Liverpool, they're running out led by Max Farmer. Uh, their wicket keeper and the rest of the side um, with um, the two batters for Sydney Uni making their way out to the pitch as well. I believe one is Jack Attenborough. I do not know. William Selzman, I think, is the other one. Well, that's his. He was wearing jersey 40, but it doesn't look like him from when he was bowling. So I'm oh, like, no, yeah. They, they can play funny buggers with us with these shirts numbers. <laughs> they do it quite a lot, so we will uh, 
we will wait and uh, wait for the... We'll do the right thing. We'll wait for the scoreboard to update us who the two batters are. But we do know one is... Um, we do know one is Jack Attenborough. He normally does open the batting here. For the students, it looks like Liam Hatcher will take first over. So Kiwi Mick, he, he joins us for the first five overs. He will be taking you through those first five overs. He will... Uh, I'm looking forward to this one, Kiwi Mick. Absolutely. So Liam Hatcher here... The fiery redhead, I say that in rugby league about... But he is a fiery league, league yep. redhead. But a pace and strike here for Fairfield Liverpool. The target, 158. Quarter final. So, of course, knockout. And then semi-finals in two weeks' time. And Liam Hatcher here will be looking for some early wickets. Yeah. Fairfield Liverpool got off to a great start. They were none for 40 after four. Looks like, well, they've put William Selzman up on the board, so we'll, go with we'll that. have to go with that. So here he goes now, first ball of the run, Trace. And a good cut shot through the gap, and that could roll away for four. It's a long boundary out there. Two fielders giving chase, and it hits the picket fence. What a great start there by William Selzman with a beautiful cut shot there for four, especially off Hatch's bowling. Yeah, well, it was on pace delivery there, just a bit short. Easy cutting length. And as I said, with this new hard ball, it, it, this will probably be when it'll be the best time for the batters out there. Um, and it sort of just, it, it didn't stay low like we saw at the end of the uh, Fairfield Liverpool innings. It just was nice cuttable length and he put it away to that long boundary. Here goes Hatcher again, the big right armour. He goes down the wicket, this time Salesman, but through to the keeper for no run. So a nice little comeback delivery there. It was a bit closer to the stumps this time. He's trying to give himself some room, but again, maybe there's just that little spot because that one did stay low. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if Hatcher can keep honing in on that uh, unpredictable spot uh, outside the off stump. So Liam Hatcher bowls from probably about three metres outside the 30 metre circle. He's got quite a big run up, Liam Hatcher. Playing for New South Wales. Flicks it off the pads. What a great shot for four around the corner on the 45 degree angle. That's great batting by William Salzman. And Sydney University have got the great start like Fairfield Liverpool did. No wicket for eight after three balls. Yeah, he just doesn't have his radar, does he? Does he, Hatcher? That one was on, on, on the hip. And it was just a matter of beating that man inside the circle. Short boundary towards fine leg. Four runs. Yeah, so very good start there. And it's uh, Liam Hatch is being hit around a little bit here. A couple of well-controlled boundaries as he steams in again. Flicked off the pads, but this time it'll be no run to that man in close on the 45-degree angle. A good start here. Sydney University making trying to make the most of these first four overs. Good crowd here at... Sydney University Oval, a few people up on the hill and the seats and a couple laying on the grass as well. And a great ground. You can sit in the shade here or sit in the sun. You sort of take your choice. But, um, very good facilities for cricket. Here we go now again. And that one's hit the pad. A huge thud coming through the sound effects mic. So... Definitely not an LBW chance, though. One ball left in the first over, no wicket for eight. Good start. The vibes are, are really good downstairs as well. It's really yeah. positive from what I was seeing. Um, I overheard a bit of the, uh, the last words before they walked out, yep. and the instruction was to play, to play straight. So I don't think we're going to try and do anything fancy, hard, fast, hit the pitch, see what happens. Absolutely. So here we go again, Hatcher. And he's gone for a tricky shot. And oh. he's dropped him. He's dropped him. It was up. high. It was the man behind the keeper there racing around. He had plenty of time, but he's dropped it. Probably really should take that one, Georgia. It's um, a big miss there. And after one over, Sydney University, no wicket for nine. The target, 158. You practice those at training regularly, yep. I'm sure. It's like one of the last things or the first things you do as well, especially in your warm-up. So 
that would be a huge letdown. But we have to t- the, the chances have to be taken. They really do. Otherwise, yeah. it's, it can slip away very quickly. We know Sydney University can be extremely aggressive when it comes to their batting as well. So Selzman moves through to nine. He's got all the runs so far. And uh, interesting drop chance. It's going to be Joshua Baraba, who had a great effort last week. Right armour. Oh, and that one's beaten for pace. An absolute screamer through to the keeper. Josh Baraba, four overs, four for 24 last week. And Fairfield Liverpool's win over Bankstown to make it through to the quarterfinals. So he's coming off some form. Pretty good opening combination here with the ball for Fairfield Liverpool. As he gets to the top of his mark again, running in from the 30 metre circle, Josh Baraba. And he's driven him down the ground this time, but straight to the man at mid on for no run. Fires it into the keeper, Max Farmer. A little bit of pace here, Josh Baraba, that's for sure. Mm, quite a sprightly as well, like running in, hitting the pitch hard, which is generally what you want to do as a pace bowler as well. And good, like, a good action too, so it, 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 it's carrying him through. There's none of this halting while we're, while we're bowling, losing that momentum. It's consistent. Baraba again to Salzman. He's given us a whack, and that could roll away for four. There we go, the agricultural swing across the line, but he controls it nicely along the ground there. Great stuff by Will Salzman. He moves through to 13. It's no wicket for 13 in the second. Look off to a good start, that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah, we could probably use a few more runs here and there, but look, none for 13 off only 1.3 overs. Definitely a good start. So again, Baraba. And he's flicked this one beautifully off his hip. That was a nice shot. A bit like Rohit Sharma yesterday against Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Some of those sixes, and that crowd was unbelievable. They were insane, hey? Oh, watching that on the TV, you got adrenaline just watching mm. all those Indian flags flying around. It was great to watch. Good Saturday night in that one. And... Uh, now it's going to be Jack Attenborough on strike to face his first ball, right-handed batter. As Baraba steams in from the northern end. Flicks it away into the onside for no run, straight to that fielder. So one ball left in the second, no wicket for 14. Remembering the target here is 158. Runs required is 145. Yep. Because the screen tells me that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not figure that It tells that me that too, time. actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's speaking to me. <laughs> here goes Baraba to Edinburgh. Glides this one away. Good fielding inside the circle. If he missed that, it would have been four. But they will pick up a single behind that point area. And after two overs here, Sydney University, no wicket for 15. Few more people coming out to uh, to the oval. That's for sure. A few people sitting on uh, the park benches. Yep. A couple of bin chickens, from what I can see, is <laughs> where <laughs> Ibis is lurking around. Yeah. No, it's a fantastic atmosphere. It's right in the heart of Sydney as well, which makes it even more accessible for all those who do live on this side of the bridge. Fantastic venue. Sure is, and great hospitality here. They look after us, the ground staff. A big Always. shout out to them. Very um, hospitable for our. For us to come here and commentate. So Liam Hatcher again to back up for his second over. He's one over, no wicket for nine. And he'll be bowling to Jack Attenborough, the opening batsman for Sydney University. Runs in now, Hatcher. And this one flicked off the pads. They'll pick up one to the man on the fence there. And uh, pretty easy single there for Jack Attenborough. He moves through to two. Salesman on 14. They need a wicket here. Fairfield Liverpool. Could be a match that goes down to the wire here. 
And um, the wind's dropped down quite a lot. It was quite windy at 2.30 when we started today, but it's mm. dropped right off. And here goes Hatcher again to Selzman. Nice drive down the ground, but didn't quite get it all. He'll pick up a single to the man at mid-off, who races around there to do the fielding. Another single here for the students. No wicket for 17. Doing the fielding there was Mansuk Singh. So Liam Hatcher. The right arm quick here. Runs in now to Adam Burrow. Right-handed batter. Oh, and that's a nice square drive there. And that one's going to roll all the way to the picket fence here. Great shot. The home crowd loved that one. Good crowd has built during the day. And Sydney University, no wicket for 21. And the third over. That's two square drives that they've played mm -hmm. that's beaten. Those two fielders right and close there. But he's two shots when they've split them. And I think that's more than what we saw in the uh, first innings. Yeah. When it came to the drives, that's for sure. So looking pretty comfortable out here, early doors, the students. Here goes Hatcher again. Oh, and that one's moved away off the seam. Nice delivery through to the keeper for no run. Bit of a surprise for the batsman, wasn't it? Yeah. Almost as if wasn't expecting it. Hope you're enjoying our coverage on Triple H, and if you're listening on Frogbox as well, now coverage of the T20 Kingsgrove cricket competition so here goes Hatcher 1.4 overs no wicket for 15 as he runs in again now to Edinburgh and again that square drive this time behind point but finer they will pick up a single eventually so Edinburgh through to 7 Salesman on 15, no wicket for 22, no extras yet, there were quite a few extras in that first innings, over 20, which is quite a lot, probably about two or three no balls as well, so they will add up in the end, here goes Salesman again on strike, and it's a crack down the ground, but straight to the field, who fires it at the stumps, no run, three overs gone, Sydney University, no wicket for 22, the target 158. All right, so we know that Sydney University are going to come out fairly aggressive, as we've seen and heard through, uh, through the coverage as well. Already some fantastic work, none for 22 or three overs, yep. showing their intent early too. That's right, it will be Josh Baraba again. Bowling to Jack Edinburgh. As he just takes his time to take his stance here. Josh Baraba, nice little bit of pace he's got. Definitely can thread in to take some wickets. He bowls now. And he slams this one over the fielders on the onside down to Cow Corner for another four. So Edinburgh and Salesman have come out blazing here. And it's no wicket for 26. So, good work here. The field is up in the first four overs. Only two men allowed outside. That 30 metre circle. Oh, and this one's nearly bowled him. Edinburgh's gone down the wicket. Baraba has the hands on the head. Thinking, how did that miss? Nice delivery there as Edinburgh just walks off to square leg to regather. The thoughts. Both players in double digits now, the opening batters. Edinburgh on 11, Salesman on 15. And Josh Baraba, 1.2 overs, no wicket for 10. As he runs in again now. And Edinburgh glides this one away. They'll pick up a single. As he glides it behind that point area down to that short third man up inside the circle. 
And back on strike now is Will Salzman as the plane flies overhead. <laughs> First one of the day over this ground. Pretty sure there was one earlier. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I was out the back. That was Kiwi in his reflection time. <laughs> <laughs> Barabra again. And Salzman has smashed this for four. That's a crunching shot. This is great stuff by the opening pair here for Sydney University. And that's all the way to the picket fence. Hitting it towards the long boundary as well with some of these shots. They're really smashing it over straight on that onside. And it's no wicket for 31 here in the fourth over. Similar start to Fairfield Liverpool who were no wicket for 40 after four. So they're matching them in that department in these first four overs. Here goes Baraba again. Down the wicket, crunches it. Straight to the fielder. And he's run halfway down the wicket there, but then comes back. Thinking maybe we can squeeze out a single there. Definitely no run on. And we'll, we'll go around the grounds at the end of this over. There's some interesting starts yep. for the run chases in some of these other games. Absolutely, four quarterfinals on today, all running at the same time. Here goes Baraba, and he's gone for it. And it's going to be safe, but it won't be a boundary. They'll pick up two as he's gone to that deep cover. Landed about 15 metres inside the boundary rope. But they will pick up a couple. So four overs gone here, Sydney University, no wicket for 33. Yeah, we'll go around the grounds for these other matches uh, out at Hurstville, uh, St George nine for one thirty, Penrith one for seventeen in the in the third. Um, at Marylands Park, uh, in reply to Gordon's three for one sixty three, Parramatta also one for seventeen off three. But that game at Coogee Oval Kiwi, we, we got the Bumblebees all out for seventy five. I don't know what's happened there ah. at Coogee three for twenty seven, <laughs> Randy Pete. So it is game on at Coogee. We'll keep you updated as much as we can yep. because. I said still 50-odd runs required. They can get one more wicket, the Bumblebees. I think they're in with a chance. Who would have thought that thing after bowled out for 75? Could be a real low-scoring one there. Jaden Simmons into the attack now. Who, of course, opened the batting for Fairfield Liverpool earlier on today. So this is a perfect start here for Sydney University. Not losing a wicket in the first four overs. Here goes Simmons now. To Adam Burrow, who dances down the wicket, but pushes it into the onside for no run. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the students do. We saw, we saw uh, the Fairfield Liverpool. This is sort of when the squeeze came. That's right. Yeah, they did put the squeeze on after that first four overs. They slowed things down a bit. So it will be Jaden Simmons, who's sort of a medium quick bowler, right armour. Well, pretty much medium, really. But this one driven down the ground by Attenborough for a single. The fielder there, Manchuk Singh, slips over and trips over himself a little bit in the outfield. Yeah, but we, as we've seen with the uh, with the with the power play ending and, and the, the run rate going down, they need to keep going here, I think, the students. Take advantage while this ball's hard and try and keep hitting those boundaries. There is still a lot of space here, particularly with this long western boundary. So here goes Simmons again, bowling to Selzman, who's gone for it. It's going to be wide of the fielder at a wide third man position. They will pick up a pretty comfortable two as well. Good stuff here by the students, chipping away at this target. And uh, batting pretty good out here. It will be uh, Selzman on strike again. And uh, Jaden Simmons, the bowler. He runs in now the right arm up. He's given this a good crack as well. Just short of the fielder by about two metres. He ran in, maybe thinking it was a half a chance at deep cover. They'll pick up one. No wicket for 37 here in the fifth over. The target is 158. And uh, they saw off. Liam Hatcher not letting him get a wicket early. 
and Baraba, who got four for 24 last week. Probably the two most dangerous bowlers, they kept them out. Goes down the wicket again. It's underneath the fielder. They'll definitely pick up two, maybe three here. Goes out to this huge boundary on this one side of the field. They'll pick up two in the end. Doing the fielding there was Jake Landon. They're in cruise control here. Sydney University side. No wicket for 39. One left in the fifth here. Edinburgh on 15 on strike. Salesman on 24. So here goes Simmons again. Another good drive down the ground. Beats that fielder in close on the offside. They'll pick up one. So after five overs here, Sydney University, no wicket for 40. Over to you, Matt Mears. Thanks, Kiwi Mac. Good sign here from the students, but you would think the Fairfield Lions will not count themselves out yet. You could see, though, Georgia mm -hmm. um, Orendowski, the kipper there in at short cover, kicking himself for letting those two underneath the hands there at short cover. This does mean a lot. As I said, a lot, a lot can come with a victory here. And even with this start, we saw what happened in the first innings. It, you would predict that it's going to happen again. The ball's going to keep lower and slower. There's uh, more people out on the boundary, so... They just want to make sure they keep themselves in this one, don't they? Yeah, definitely. And, of course, they want to be careful with Harbour bridging it over the ball <laughs> as well. Maybe we don't want to do that as often. Uh, but, look, th it looks like they're starting to understand the, the pitch a little bit more and the field a little bit more as well with all the sand. Well, Nishke comes in for his first from the northern end and uh, he goes a bit short of a length. It does get up to that sort of rib area and it is uh, played out onto the onside. They pick up a single... Again, we've seen uh, the almost Baywatch style there, the fielders in the middle of that big sand patch. Uh, maybe <laughs> David Hasselhoff will be down there too. R running point. a little faster, though. <laughs> maybe running a bit faster <laughs> yeah. than him. Um, but yeah, they need to be in off these big boundaries. <laughs> yeah, need, they need to be off these big boundaries, boundaries to cut off the two. As this one comes in again, the Saltzman. Again, it's on leg stump, but it's probably where he wants to err uh, on the side of that leg side big boundary. They do pick up another single rather than putting it outside off. And even even a big sort of hoik outside off stump could take a top edge and go for six. So Just throw the kitchen sink at it. You never know what's going to happen. Well, I, think, I, think, I think with the, the students, as said, being none down here, still in the six over, they'll, they'll want to just maybe throw a caution to the wind a little bit and try and <laughs> keep this run rate up. As it does again, Saltzman, he comes down the wicket, tries to find that... Tries to get that a bit straighter. There's a big gap between the sweeper at cover and uh, mm. mid off, or long off, but uh, he only he, he sort of gets it out off the outside edge and just picks up a single to the sweeper. But as I said, if you can get it over that man, it's sort of it's the skipper there at short cover. There's a lot of free territory, particularly with that short boundary. So it's probably where he's aiming for currently. Mm -hmm. But um, Ishikei comes in again. Where will this one be? It is a slower ball. Up at the stumps, but uh, well played by Saltzman to get it out to the fielder there, sweeping for it to pick up another single. It's going to be interesting to see now what uh, the Lions will do. They've got their five fielders back at uh, deep square, cow corner, long on, long off, and sweeping at cover. They won't want any outside edges. As he tries to get the reverse going. I don't know where that shot's come from, Georgia. Atbert tries the reverse sort of ramp out of nowhere. We know where it's nowhere. going. <laughs> well, he's tried the reverse ramp out of nowhere. And um, Nishay's just hit it straight on middle stump. He's tried to find some of that vacant territory over the man inside the circle, down towards the third man boundary. But the students lose their first wicket for 44. With... Um, Mortimer, the new incoming batter. Well, uh, well, we know how that shot ended for him, that's for sure. <laughs> With the bat in the change room. Oh, Whoa. goodness. I feel like it may have been a little too early to try that shot. 
or not, and or we just shouldn't play that shot at all. <laughs> oh, I'd say I would certainly wouldn't play a shot like that, but I feel I, like I would wear the ball if I tried a shot like that more than anything. Yeah, I, I know the feeling, but as I said, maybe maybe just riding that high. They said yeah, they are they are keeping up with that run rate. This feeling that they can't go into that sort of mm. slow period like the Lions the Lions did. Yeah, you've got to try and keep the consistency and the uh, the effort up as well. Keep that run rate going, but I said it was good delivery, sort of nip back a little bit, took middle peg. Attenborough bold is on his way back for eighteen off six delivery off sixteen deliveries. Saltzman, he's still there twenty six off nineteen. Mortimer, the new man for the students to face his final delivery of Nishke's first over. That was again from the northern end and just locked back down the wicket. No reverse ramps there again. So six overs gone here at University number one oval. One for 44. The students in reply to Fairfield Liverpool Lions. Seven for 157. 115 required off 14 overs. So if you have just tuned in, thank you for listening. Triple H Sports coverage here of the Kings Grove Sports Centre. T20 Cup quarterfinal day here from University Oval. Number one, the home side, the University, uh, Sydney University students taking on the Fairfield Liverpool Lions is uh, coming in again and big swing outside the off stump. Someone thought they heard a. I feel like I edge. heard something. <laughs> well, I'm hearing things didn't. clearly. <laughs> yeah. Jaden Simmons thought he heard something. The skipper thought he heard something there at short cover, but the umpire here at the southern end thought he did not hear anything but hit, hit a fly <laughs> could be anything but the bat is still there and that's all the students will worry about that but is yeah. true thank you for listening to your coverage whether you're listening on triple h 100.1 fm or you're listening through frog box via the cricket new south wales website well youtube channel i should say <laughs> as uh simmons comes in again this one's on the pads and it's flicked out there to the man at cow corner. Quick talking about that short boundary, Georgia, to that leg side. Mm. It's not really where Simmons wants to keep it because they said you get it on those pads, it can disappear very quickly. Yeah, it really can. And um, depending on how quick your uh, your wrist action is as well, could be the difference between a single, a four, or a six. Yeah. They said it's just so short. If you're not watching on Frogbox, it comes in again here. This one's just played by Mortimer down the ground. They'll pick up a single. Fielding done there by uh, Singh. But, um, yeah, if you're not watching on Frogbox, you're listening through Triple H 100.1 FM. They're playing right onto that eastern side of the of the square here. So it's you're going to sort of a 50-metre boundary versus the western side, which is you're getting close to 80. Mm. It, this is the fun. These are the. This is what we love. Early, early summer, or, or spring cricket, using these outer edge pitches. As he goes, the big swing again. Does Will Saltzman? He was trying to put that one up here, and I think into the clubhouse. <laughs> but um, just nice bit of movement, and it uh, swings past the outside edge of that bat. Has a has other plans, and is trying to get this done quickly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Got some dinner plans. Maybe there's somewhere uh, good around here. Maybe you can tell us. I will, I will say, though, that uh, the chicken roll from uh, the canteen, I will recommend. There's this one again. He just tries to play it off the open face and uh, just gets it in that little gap between backward point and point. Picks up another single. He moves to 28, does Saltzman. One for 47 here. One ball left in the seventh. Said if you are listening on Triple H 100.1 FM, if you want to tune in and keep tuning in afterwards, there will be an episode of our Splinters podcast, cricket related. Mm. There's the next one here, just played into the offside, past uh, Onoski there at short cover. But again, well done by the sweeper to first single. Seven overs gone, one for 48. Simmons, two overs have cost 11. But yes, Georgia, I believe I got told it was the WBBL preview is this Ooh. week. Okay. Which okay. you'd hope is because it starts next week, but 
knowing you, Caruso's you scheduling. Well, knowing Caruso's <laughs> scheduling, it could be on a week after the tournament starts. So, but that's what I'm told. Well, we have been told that it has been recorded specifically for this week, so I'm glad to hear it. Are you on this one, Georgia, or were you on the? Uh, were you on the? Uh, I was on the um, Premier the, Cricket one. The Premier Cricket one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm not sure who we got to do this one. I was supposed to, but um, just a bit, a bit too busy returning back to work. Of course, uh, the school term kick, kicked off again, so uh, just trying to get everything prepared and, and ready uh, for my students. Oh, just uh, Mishke, first ball of his second over. Just a little bit sloppy there by the skipper again there. It's short cover. They get through for a single. I think he does have a special guest, which... Off the top of my head, I can't remember. I probably could tell you. I do <laughs> Off have the top of my I head, do, I can't remember. I do have the uh, the list of uh, podcasts here on my computer. Is uh, uh, the next ball from uh, Salzman gets uh, flicked off the pads to the man at uh, deep square leg. Another single to the total. Um, splinters. Um, so, yeah, W09 preview. He had uh, some special guests from the Manly Cricket Club. Mm, okay. Sally Molyneux, uh, Renee Hoff, and Saskia Hawley there you go. joining in for that one. So if you do want to though, listen to George's episode, the uh, the the uh, we'll just wait again. There is it swept away and it's gone. We'll get back to that in a minute because the second wicket has gone down here at University Number One. Mortimer tries to get hold of one down the leg side, but all he can do is find Singh here at fine leg on the boundary. Two wickets gone now here. Two for 50 here in the eighth. Yeah, look, fantastic work by uh, the Fairfield Liverpool Lions to take that wicket as well. It was looking very dangerous and very comfortable too. So um, fantastic effort by the team to and a very comfortable catch as well, which is exactly what you want to see. Straight <laughs> to him. Didn't even have to move. <laughs> yeah, Mortimer will be dirty himself for picking out that field. There's a lot of vacant territory here on mm. this vast western side. So... He'll be, he'll be very disappointed himself. He is out for three. Two for 50 here. 7.3 overs gone. Um, 109 still required to get to that 158 target. But, yes, uh, there will be that WBBL 09 preview that will be following us here on Triple H 100.1 FM. So, it'll be a good one before that first game that kicks off on uh, Thursday night between uh, the Sixers and the Stars. We already know that us we will be there. We Kiwi will be Mick there. Mo- Kiwi Mick might... You're going to join bar's, us, bud? If the bar's open, Maybe. I'm sure he'll be there. If the bar's open, I'm sure he'll be there. <laughs> he'll meet us afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be at Percy's. as uh, first ball of the new batter. <laughs> you know, Tim Cummins, the skipper, just pushed out onto the offside. No run. Yeah, it's, it's North Sydney Oval, Kiwi Mick. So, yeah, we'll meet you at Percy's afterwards. <laughs> He's in. But, uh, but, yeah, no, so that'll be a great episode of, um, of Splinters coming up right after this. But you can go listen including that women's premier cricket preview. Um, highly recommend. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. You can listen to that wherever you find your podcast to mm-hmm. search for Splinters. We've also got the men's premier cricket previews. we got Max Hope from Sydney Uni was mm-hmm. on our part two with myself and Anthony Caruso as next delivery here uh, by Saltzman just pushed into the leg side, picks up a single. But yes, um, so we've got some great cricket ones. There's a cricket World Cup preview, which already all of those have uh, been well and truly disproven in this first week. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so as I said, if you do enjoy your sporting podcast, make sure you search uh, wherever you get your podcasts from, or you can search through the Triple H FM website as well. So certainly one that you should uh, be following, whether you're it's uh, iTunes or Spotify or anyone like that, as Cummins plays this one again down the ground. Too long off as he picks up another single. He moves to two. Two for 53 here. Eight overs gone. Nishé, two wickets for nine off his two overs so far. He's been dangerous here for the Fairfield Lions. I must admit, I was doing uh, I was doing a few plugs in the school holidays. Colleagues of mine were going on holidays and driving, and they're like, what should I listen to? So I just sent them splinters. <laughs> I was like, here, have a listen to this. You might it, like it. It is still pretty cool. It, yeah. It, it, we still... We did move podcast providers, but we are still able to offer it through iTunes and, well, sorry, Apple Podcasts and all the different podcast places. So it does feel pretty cool that we've got one that is like, and it makes it feel more official to me mm. that it's on a big proper. platform. Very proper. 
because that's the opposite of us, as uh, Simmons <laughs> comes in again for his third over from the southern end and uh, Cummins uh, <laughs> slashes outside that off stump but uh, goes through keeper, no run. Hey, it's a podcast. Hey, we're over 250 episodes. Yeah. Hey, we, we've been going longer than some TV shows. Certainly have. As I said, it is some good content, it's particularly that we don't have the bench running anymore. Mm-hmm. Still get some good sporting content out there for your uh, listening pleasure here on Triple H Sport. As uh, Simmons comes in here to Cummins, he's the master of the uh, of the little scoops and that. And Oof. That looks like he's playing flags down at Gogola <laughs> Beach on a <laughs> Sunday morning as he dies. <laughs> Part of nippers. <laughs> the field dies into that big sand patch down at Fine Lake, but he doesn't stop the ball going for four. Cummins is now on six, two for 57 here in the ninth. I must admit, I love watching those things on the beach <laughs> because I'm so grateful I'm not part of it. <laughs> yeah. But it is cute watching the kids like run and try and grab that hose piece out of the ground. You're like, get it, get it. Well, he was trying to get the ball and uh, couldn't do that one as Simmons comes in again to Cummins and sort of squares him up a little bit, but finds some vacant uh, territory here on the offside. Uh, picked up by uh, Cameron Fredo there at uh, point as uh, Cummins moves to 7 2 for 58 here target almost down to 100 as uh, the field scatters a little bit trying to protect that short boundary towards the lake side here if you're looking uh, through frog box on the Cricket New South Wales YouTube page as this one's up in the block hole ooh Fredo Ouch. Well defended back to the bowler. They're the they're the tough ones. You don't want to be getting those hit ones they hit hard. Hurt. Yeah, you don't want to get hit hard in your follow through. Oh, they hurt. But I they do make them. the best bruises yeah, and best stories. I, mean, I got one when I was away, and I had the whole of my uh, thumb all was just bruise underneath the thumbnail. Oh. It's almost gone. It's almost grown out. Classy. <laughs> it, it felt good. <laughs> As uh, next one on the pads there, just pushed into the onside. Good fielding down there um, by uh, Brock Fitton at uh, Cow Corner. Gets it in for a single. But yeah, they're the best ones because you, you don't know if you've broken it either. So you don't know if it's just like... <laughs> a bit of shock. <laughs> it just means you've got to have a, go have a beer. You just need some painkillers. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what we do in England. Okay, great. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> oh, Simmons there to Cummins. Cummins again swings it outside the off stump. Nine overs gone here. The target is now down to 100. 100 off. 66 required for the students. 2 for 59 oh, yeah. here. Tim Cummins is on 7. Will Saltzman's on 31. Simmons three overs have cost 17 runs. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Nice, nice, uh, mm. nice expert commentary there for us, George. Sorry, I was trying to read the board. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm even I'm even I with my binocular glasses is um, even though yeah, it's struggling a little bit. I think they've uh, reduced the font on it a little bit from last time we were here. I think so. <laughs> Either that or I need new glasses. Uh, well, maybe it's that too, but uh, we're going to see spin for the first time from Ooh. the Lions. Uh, Cameron Fredo uh, coming into the attack. Left arm orthodox, and Saltzman's gone, thank you very much. I'm going to try and pick out that gap between uh, cover and uh, mid-off, and it looks like it's just done the old devil, Georgia, and oh. just spun away from him. It took a right-hand turn. <laughs> I went, yeah, nah. <laughs> I don't want to go where you guys are going. <laughs> I'm going to go this way. Yeah, you got to watch those devil of a spins, and that's what it's done there. Saltzman's riding his luck. He's now on 35. Four off the first ball. He's going to left arm orthodox. It's hard. Blowing a gale. It certainly is. Hard spinning it when you're spinning towards that short boundary. As Saltzman there cuts and cuts hard, but just finds the man at point. No run. But, George, it is hard when it's at he's a... Left arm orthodox, he's turning the ball away from the stumps, he's turning it to that short boundary. Mm. So it is easy for the uh, the right-handers to try and play it through the offside with the spin. He's going to have to be right on the ball, and he is there, but it's 
deflected very nicely, but didn't get a lot of power on that one, Saltzman. And it's uh, picked up by the man at, at uh, short third man. I mean, didn't get a lot of power, but still managed to guide it away from the player. So it was enough to at least get a single. Yeah. But as I said, we have seen in that situation where it just rockets off the bat for four. Yeah, so. true. That's what they, that's what they <laughs> won't want. Either or. They thought they won't want the lines. But Cummins is on strike. What's he got in store for us? He just chops this one into the offside and they'll uh, pick up a single. This is, That's the matchup, though, I was looking forward to. Cummins with the with the um, left arm orthodox mm. because you know that he can sort of play those funky the funky shots. We've already seen him. Oh, uh, we saw it. <laughs> we before. saw it. <laughs> We've already seen it before. But... Um, See what happens next time. As Saltzman again cuts hard. Um, but it's straight down the ground to the man at um, long off. Another single to the total. Saltzman's now 37. Two for 66 here. One ball left in the in the 10th over. Kiwi Mick will be joining us back here in a second. 93 still required off 61 deliveries for the students. As Cummins now faces. He comes down the ground and he's stumped. That's the way Tim Cummins plays. He's always going to try and push that run rate along no matter what. And I said it was just a bit shorter there again. We've seen it come off the pitch a bit slower here today, Georgia. Mm. And it sort of gripped and turned past the bat of Tim Cummins. It was easy there for Max Farmer, the keeper, to get those bails off. Tim Cummins was well and truly out of his ground. So as we get to halfway through the innings, three for 66 here. The students as Jordan Gauchi makes his way out to the crease and Kiwi Mick, we welcome you back for the next five overs. Boy, this is going to be an interesting one with 93 required yep. off 60 balls. Yep, welcome back. Uh, yeah, they've pulled it back nicely here, Fairfield Liverpool. Similar um, innings in the first 10 overs of each side, really. But um, 93 off 60 balls. Cummins is gone, Mortimer's gone. That's two of their best batters. They've still got Mackleduff to come though, I think. Yeah, you got Makadoff probably coming next. Yep. So you've got Jordan Gauchi out there now. And then you then you really are looking at sort of the all-rounders after that. So I said I think there's going to have to be... These two are really going to have to put on a good partnership. They'll probably want them to bat at least the next five overs together. So Salzman on 37. He'll be on strike. There was a nice little bit of spin bowling there. Drawing Cummins out of the crease for the charge. Pretty evenly poised game here. Kiwi Viz will go. <laughs> Sydney University 52, Fairfield Liverpool 48. I think Ooh. it's very close. And it's going to be Yuva Nishke, the right armour. Just holds this one up on the pitch on the batter. They'll race through fast for the single, and that's all they'll get. Yeah. yeah. I think... I think you. you I, I, I do agree with that Kiwi vids, but yeah, it's that nine runs and over. Yeah. Mm. Particularly is what we've seen when, when if you get the, the, the slower balls and uh, the, the cutters on this pitch, particularly with, with some variable bounces, this ball get older. Uh, just knocking it around for singles and twos is, isn't going to cut it. They, they need to really try and find this short boundary towards the lake side. So Jordan Gauchi on strike as Nishke comes in now. And this is a full bunger, but driven straight to point, one bounce. Nope. A metre either side of the field, or that was four. It's you really got to put those ones away. Yeah, I think the, the, the batter as well is looking for a, a full full uh, full toss, no ball. But you see the umpire at square leg gave the little signal that it was under under waist tight. Shane Evans, I'm sure, would have uh, <laughs> given us a full run down of that. So here goes Nishke again to Gauchi. Oh, and it's a good ball here. It's just dropped on him late and yorked him. This is nice bowling. Fairfield Liverpool, there's a bit of energy out there. They're backing themselves. They want the upset. Be a good effort for them to make the semi-finals. Normally they're not in the sort of top runners in this comp, are they? Oh, I'd say if they if they can get the job done here today, they, they would be stoked to be playing semi-final mm. cricket. Yep. Um, but as I said, they've, they've already batted on this pitch. They've, they've seen what sort of line and lengths and... And what they need to do, so it's now whether they can execute. Nishke to Gauchi. This is better. Is it going to beat that fielder on the fence? No, it won't. The man at deep squirrel, chance of a run out. And he's home. So it's not out. 
<laughs> and they pick up a couple of runs. <laughs> it's the old swivel. <laughs> and uh, as we heckle one another. You never know who's listening on Triple no, H in the front box. You if you read between the lines. You certainly do not know who is listening. No. <coughs> we tracked a cast of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> he was Nishke again. Oh, and this one, an inside edge nearly onto the stumps. They'll race through for the single. It's going to really build down to a big finish here, I think. Let's have a look now. One ball left in the 11th. Three for 70. Sydney University, the target is 158. Salesman on 38, Jordan Gauchi on 3. Captain Tim Cummins not really getting a big score today. He's one of their key players, that's for sure. Nishke bowls from pretty much bang on the 30 metre circle. As he runs into bowl now to Salesman, who's holding it all together. And that's a real wide one. But the umpire says it's all good, just inside the line. Hasn't been many wides today, has there? No, it's been some good bowling. Hardly by any both wides. Teams. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll do some round the grounds for you. Kuji Oval. Um, you, the Bumblebee is all out for seventy-five. Randy Pete's four for fifty-one off twelve. Um, out at Marylands Park. Gordon three for one sixty-three. Parramatta three for sixty-three off eleven in reply. And at Hurstville. In reply to uh, St George's 9 for 130, Penrith 3 for 78 off 10. Cameron Friendo, who got that key wicket of Tim Cummins, stumped in the last over with some left arm spin, bowling to Jordan Gauchi. Nice crowd here on a peaceful Sunday afternoon. Throws it up, a little bit leg side ish though, flicked away off the pads by Gauchi. They race through fast for the first, and it's all they'll get as Cameron Friendo does the Fielding off his own bowling. After it's fired in from the outfield. So here goes Salesman on strike on 38. He'll be definitely looking to get at least 50 here. As he runs in now, Friendo. And this one, he's inside edge. Past the keeper for a single. Bit of luck there. Yeah, you can see him really trying to fire in on that leg stump. If he knows any sort of width on that offside, it's just going to disappear through that offside. This is the sort of time where if anything is like that that can be punished, these university uh, batsmen will really take advantage. So they need 87 off 52. Gouch hits square to mark. Leading edge into the offside for no run. Plenty of clapping out here by the Fairfield Liverpool team in the field looking for an upset in this quarter final. It's Friendo the left arm spinning out. Dances oh, down the oh. wicket, nearly a return catch to the bowler. Return to sender. Return to sender. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Elvis Presley, what a song. <laughs> As they, they pick up the single eventually to long on. No 12th so man fans here, okay. Salesman back on strike. <laughs> Friendo getting through the over nice and quick. This is a quicker one. Driven through the covers. They'll pick up one. The fielder in the outfield juggled that, but they didn't take him on for the second. He fires it back into the bowler, Friendo. Selsman, Will Selsman moves on to 40 now. Gauchi on five. Friendo, 1.5 overs, one for 11. To complete the 12th over now. Gauchi goes down the wicket, smashes it over the covers. And they'll pick up two to the man on the fence, who fires it into the keeper. So 12 overs gone here. Sydney University, three for 76. They need 83 of 48 balls. So it's pretty much 10 and over they need now, all of a sudden, isn't it? It certainly is. I said, do we just, you just see that run rate creep up when you get into that sort of nine territories and you're only getting six or seven it can it can creep up very very quickly and uh, as I thought you you'll have seen the students just want to keep going a bit with that newer harder ball it's it's when they've got to try and get runs away now as we saw in the first innings where it's sort of once those sort of the cutters and the slower balls come in and 
variable bounce comes in as well with the with the older softer ball it, it does make run making just that bit harder here goes Nishke again and a chance for a run out he's missed the stumps and eventually they're going to get a single absolute chaos out in the middle here at University Oval and they pick up one so Yuvan Yuvan Nishke 3.1 overs 2 for 14 yeah, he's been doing he snuck that. under the radar. He's been doing this with that Devil in the Lone job, hasn't mm. he? Yep. He's just taking the pace off the ball, getting it to move around a little bit and just bowl those good areas and it's just he's just been so hard to get away. So Nishke now to Gauchi. Slower ball, driven straight to the man inside the circle on the offside for no run. The captain doing the fielding there, Luke Oronofsky. We've got a valuable 50 today to set up this run chase. Yeah, it's looking gold at the moment, isn't it? Just thought if the, the students had got him early, they probably would have been chasing maybe 20 or 30 fewer runs. So mm. they're all looking like gold at the moment when that sort of run rate's just ticked over 10 runs and over required. Nishke again. Bit of room this time. Swivels it around to deep square lead. Does Gauchi for a single? Let's have a look now. 13th over we are. 3 for 78. They need 81 or 45 balls now. It's almost getting up to two runs a ball. Mm. So they've slowed it right down after that first four or five overs. Salesman on strike. Has a swing, and that's all the way. That's a huge six here at University Oval. Over that deep square leg area. Massive six. They needed that one. Salesman's on 47. It's three for 84. That's one way to bring the run rate down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I said, he's been, such, he's been on such a good line and length outside that off stump. It's just, you get onto that leg stump, particularly with that short boundary, and... When you you sort of got to throw caution in the wind when you get those bad balls in this in this predicament. So Salesman on 47. So make a few field changes. He runs and now does Nishke. Oh, and a nice little late cut along the ground. They pick up one. Good stuff here by Salesman. Three for 85. One ball left in the 13th. 74 of 43 now. It's interesting to see they brought the cow corner in inside the circle. So it's a very big tempting shot over the, the man inside the circle. But he's just got to get it right outside off stump. And Gouch, he doesn't time this at all. But he will get a single. Are the local fans enjoying that? over that was better by the students 13 overs gone three for 86 the target 158 yeah well, it's a defending that short boundary is always going to be hard if you get one on the legs but then they put even more pressure on the youngster by bringing in cow corner into mid wicket inside the circle they pushed third man back onto the boundary just to give him a bit more protection to let him bowl outside that off stump but still it would have been interesting to see what would have happened again if, if it sort of even had been on the stumps. They, they're just giving away that room. But I think Fairfield, they just need to go for the kill here now. They, they know that the run rate is is climbing, but they said there is enough here in the sheds for the students if, if they start to get a few away. But you think yeah. the, the, with the Lions, they'll just want to keep taking wickets. Don't let the foot off the throat. And uh, just keep the pressure building more and more as uh, this uh, required run rate keeps ticking up. Josh Baraba back into the attack. He's two overs, no wicket for 17. Bowling now to Jordan Gauchi. Strap yourselves in. This could be a real good finish coming up. Baraba looking for a wicket here. As he runs in now the right armour from just outside the 30 metre circle. Bit short, and it's slammed into the onside. They'll pick up one. One bounce to the fielder there. Yeah, it looks like they're taking the power play too, Kiwi Mick. So yeah. 
This is the sort of the two overs that the students need to cash in on. We've got to see the two fielders are out or at, at sort of a, a, long, a, a whitish long on and at cow corner there. So this is when the students really need to take uh, advantage and try and bring this run rate down to a bit more of a manageable target. Salesman's on 48. And he's put this one away. That is all the way for half a dozen. One bounce over the picket fence here at University Over The locals love that one. He brings up his 50. Salesman moves through to 54. What a great knock. Showed them. <laughs> and that was to the long boundary too. Yeah. That, that is a huge hit. That's almost... That was massive. I, I, I wouldn't say MCG Oh, hit, not quite. But it is a long boundary out that way. Yeah. So to, so to be able to do it, I said, this is the time to have a go. I said they they can't they can't put too many fielders out there. So now now the pressure goes back to the bowler. I'm thinking more Blacktown International, potentially. I haven't been to Blacktown International. Yeah. <laughs> so Barabas conceding a few runs today. He was great last week. Four for twenty four. He was driven down the ground and it beats the fielder. What a great off drive that is for four. Beautiful stuff here by Selzman, leading the way, opening the batting. And he's racing along now to 58. Three for 97 now. Yeah, great shot there, beating the fielder inside the circle at mid-off. What about Cricket Central? Can we say that maybe as, as the big oh, yeah. yeah, that's there? a big... Yep. Yeah, that's pretty pretty big. We've had some also, hot days out there with the weather. Well, you see the, the, the Thunder. Thunder WBBL side will be playing some home games there. So mm. that, that'll be interesting to see how they can fit it in the... Five meters in the square. schedule, yeah. Well, the five meters squared that they have of uh, spectator watching. And Salesman, this one held up on him this delivery, but he just a neat little shot into the offside for a single. They've sped it up in the last couple of overs here, Sydney University. Sixty-one off thirty-eight now. So they've just sped it up a bit. Mm. Yeah, but no, going back to the Thunder games there. Like I said I watched a couple of the days of the Shield game there, and they had some decent crowds but mm. I said if they they get sort of like a crowd like they get at North Sydney Oval I don't know where they're going to fit them <laughs> we're going to need central. a bigger oval <laughs> I'll just need a grandstand more, more, more renovations incoming <laughs> so Gauchi on strike and didn't quite get this one but he will get a single beats the bowler on the follow through goes through to mid off three for 99 one left in the 14th yeah, 60 runs required now. Yep. He's starting to come down. They, they do need Salzman to keep going, though. So Salzman on 59, Gauchi on 11. Nice crowd here on the embankment areas and the grandstand. Definitely a good Sunday to come out for this 2020 comp. He runs in now, Baraba. Oh, what a great shot that was. Four runs. He deliberately glanced it away on the offside behind. Down to that third man area. What a shot. 63 now, Salesman. 14 overs gone. Three for 103. Yeah, three figures up there, but it was just delicate, wasn't it? That was sort of what we were referring to earlier. If you just... If you can get enough on it and beat that man inside the circle, it's going to run away. I said, not much sand at that part of the <laughs> University <laughs> Oval number one. But, um, yeah, I think it's in Saltzman's hands now. I think Gauchi and, and Vic McKeldiff and the rest of the, the uni batters to come really need to probably take start taking some of the pressure off him just mm. to let him keep going. But they need to keep the, the runs ticking over from the other end as well. As so a, yeah, big, big, big over this one as uh, Hatcher comes back into the attack. Yeah, Liam Hatcher back. He steams in now. Oh, what a great shot this one is. It's gone all the way for six. An absolute beauty from Gouch. The umpire puts her hands in the air. He's done the old swivel around the 45 degree angle for six. I'm raising the hands. I'm getting excited. <laughs> What every kid practices around the around yeah. the corner. Well, we didn't used to do that in the eighties. Well, said reputation went out the window there. It said <laughs> it was an on-pace delivery. Gauchi's eyes lit up, and he's just gone straight for that short boundary at fine leg. Now it's fifty off thirty-five. They've really put the foot down. 
He's done it again. This could go all the way. It does. It smashes into a tree and a pole as he just flicks the full toss around the corner for half a dozen. This is good stuff here. Three for 115. Wow. <laughs> well, said we, we said about reputations like not being taken into consideration here. I said mm. this is the the state player. He's a known BBL finish death bowler. So mm. I said to go six six bang bang. Um, a big statement here by Gauchi. We just said that they need him to take some of the pressure of Saltzman. Boy, what a way to do it. Here goes Hatcher again. Can he get a hat trick of sixes? He's gone for it. Oh. But this time they've got him. They've got him caught. He's tried the same shot. But the man on that 45 degree angle inside the 30 metre circle has taken the catch. But Jordan Gauchi, a good 23 runs there. And it's four for 115. Fantastic work. I'm like two sixes, bang, bang. I mean, unfortunate ending, but also fantastic work by Fairfield Liverpool knowing that he'll more than likely try that they again. They stuck and to the plan. Yeah, they to stuck back to it. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it, can, it can be costly at times, but if you stick to it, it will work. It will work. Well, said he kept going shorter and more outside of stuff. Yeah. We saw him that he kept going. Um, and I said once he was out there, he was committed to playing the shot. And I said it was a bit shorter, a bit wider than those previous two deliveries. And, mm. yeah, he could only get the top edge of the bat. But uh, I said, Hatcher, I said... The bowler's like getting the last laugh, and he certainly did that, didn't he? So Ryan McElduff, the new man, who's made a lot of runs in the last few years. Liam Hatcher, 2.3 overs, 1 for 28. Been a little bit expensive out here today. And Ryan McElduff, a right-handed batter. I think he's just, he's just bowled too many on-pace deliveries. We, we've seen that, as I said, they've been the ones that batsmen have been able to get after. McEldoff's tried the same thing and he's nearly got bowled. Hatcher puts the hands on the head. Can't believe it. Tell you what, first ball your face going up playing a shot like that. Welcome to 2023. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Said they want to go hard from that, that, that other end. You know, Saltzman can get the job done. He's, he's already on 63, but... They said they can't get bogged down at that other end and, and leave it all on his shoulders. So Hatcher is a quite a lot of the ground covered in shade now as we get a little bit later in the day. Here goes Hatcher again. Full toss and he's missed it. If he got a bit of wood on that, that was flying for four. Yeah, the Big Elder will be kicking himself with that one. It's just one of those ones. You just need to get a, a, a faint tickle on it, get it past the keeper. Yeah. But uh, it's game on here. 44 required off 31. Yep. Kiwi Viz, I'll go. Sydney University, 61. Fairfield Liverpool, 39. Yeah, I think Fairfield is still in a good shout. Yep. They're certainly not out of this one, particularly if another wicket goes down. So here he goes now to complete the 15th over. And that's only just inside the wide line. Umpire says it's all good. That was marginal. So 15 overs gone. Sydney University 4 for 115. The target 158. Over to you, Matt Mears. Thanks, Kiwi, Mick. Well done again, as always. But uh, I think you just saved by backing away there. Um, obviously, with the new wide rules now, it's sort of the, the bowler... Gets looked on a bit more favourably uh, mm. if it's still inside that line, um, even if the batter's sort of backed away to the leg side. Mm. I mean, it was a little unfair before, if you think about it as well. Though. When, since when has cricket been a fair game to bowlers? True. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good. As uh, Frendo comes back in left arm, spin, and Saltzman goes down the ground. What a catch on the boundary. The hands go on the head from Salzman. The, the left arm orthodox has done it again. It's just a bit slower. His eyes lit up. He was going down the ground. He thought he'd got it far, far enough around. But the fielder down there, Georgia, at long off, he made it some good ground and was able to get his fingertips to it. That's the wicket that Fairfield Liverpool really wanted and really needed. 
Five for 115 now, 44 required off 29 balls. I'll tell you what, no Baywatch running in slow motion around <laughs> here. That was fantastic to make, to cover the ground. Solid. How far would you reckon he travelled to get that? 25, 30 at metres? Yeah, at yeah. least. Fantastic work. Fingertips in it. Hold on to your catch. Thank you very much. Textbook. Page 124. <laughs> well, it said absolutely... Uh, I said, absolutely uh, great hands there. Nick Carruthers was the man down oh, there. Yeah. Salzman, 63 off 43 deliveries, four fours, two sixes. That looked like it was six number three, but as I said, <laughs> getting the hands to it, that's one of those ones that I'm sure will make the, uh, the YouTube clip uh, highlights mm. during the middle of the week. But uh, that brings uh, LaFonte Jackson to the wicket. We get some good names here on uh, Triple H Sport, I tell you. But um, him and McKelder, if they're going to have to do the job here, both yet to get off the mark. And uh, Fredo, 2 for 13 off 2.1. He's looked good so far. Has the left arm orthodox. Comes in again and it's pushed out to the offside. Fielded there by Short Cover, no run. You wouldn't want to take too long to try and get your eye in as this new batsman either. Two new batsmen at the crease. So, might need to start firing soon, hopefully. Well said. He's short to that offside and he goes for it. He goes the reverse sweep almost there oh, yeah. to Max Farmer. We'll wait for the signal for the umpire. Oh, he's given it as runs. Had the, had it, had maybe the gloves been a couple of inches longer, that could have gone in. When I said we needed to start firing, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it is. I, I was thinking, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll but, it is, it. but it is probably a shot. It said you've got the two fielders there mm. at, at point inside the circle, but no one behind them. Short boundary. If he can get it past those two, mm. it is four, but students can't really afford to lose much more. Five for 116, halfway through the 16th over here. 43 still required. Has gone. McKeldra tries to go down the wicket. A good piece of bowling again there by the, the left arm orthodox in Cameron Frando. Just getting a little bit of turn, isn't he, Georgia? And he gets it past that outside edge. And Max Farmer, quick as a, quick as a bee, getting the uh, bails off. And boy, students now, six for 116. Quick as a bee and cool as a cucumber. Look mm. at us go with the similes. What oh, can yeah. I say? <laughs> but no, fantastic effort by uh, Fairfield Liverpool there to uh, to take that that stumping as well. And of course, you don't get much time to think about these things when you when 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 you're behind the stumps. No, it this is, is it is literally a reflex. But this is reaction. why you see when even at this even if at this level even. But lower levels, you see the keeper out there working with one of the coaches, just doing those throwdowns before. This is that is why. That is just a, a textbook of why they do those those close in warm up drills. Because I said, if it only comes off every couple of games, you see it here. So important for the Fairfield Liverpool side is uh, Firma now, the new batter at the crease, and he just swings hard down the ground, straight into the bowler in his follow through. They're able to jog through for a single Verma gets off the mark, but uh, I don't think he's here dying wondering. He's just going to try and deposit everything over the boundary for six. That's well, well, uh, we're not we're not going to we're not going to wonder. That's for sure. We're going to know. <laughs> yes, I think Verma's probably been sent out there. Everything everything needs to go over the pickets, which is probably not the worst thing to do. Forty two still required here. As um, LaFonte Jackson still on strike as he uh, cuts this one through the gap at cover to the sweeper. He picks up a single. Frendo three overs, three for 16. There's been some great bowling by the left arm spinner. The student six for 118. 41 required off 24 balls, Georgia. Something special is going to be required here for the students to get this one done. I mean, anything can happen. We've said it before. Cricket is a strange game, a oh, strange and baby. funny game, that's for sure. We've called some interesting We've ones here. We've called some doozies. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be turning off the coverage. I wouldn't be switching YouTube off. I wouldn't be 
flicking off 100.1 FM because I think these last 24 balls are going to be something. As we see Jaden Simmons coming back for his fourth over here from the Southern or Grandstand end of Sydney University Oval number one. His first three overs have cost just 17 runs. Trying to get his field right. Three men out on the boundary protecting that short lakeside boundary as it's wide outside of Stump and yes. Fittingly, the arms go up from the umpire. Trying to keep it outside off. Wants to be making the batters hit into this long offside, but very much outside the tram trucks there. <laughs> That's a train, not a tram. I'm trying my best. <laughs> it's all right, I'll keep the call together. As, uh, <laughs> as soon as it comes in again, and this one is on leg stump, but it's just flicked away along the ground and easily... Picked up there by Sharma at Cow Corner for another single. As uh, Lafonte Jackson goes to three. Six for 120 here. Shade's definitely covering the field as well. Almost, what would you say, about a third? About a third. Field? Yeah. It's just that one bit that's coming through the <laughs> middle between <laughs> the, the two buildings. buildings yeah. That's sort of keeping the square in the sun. <laughs> at this point, but we are going almost in overtime as Sharma again tries to just deposit this one straight back over the bowler's head for six. I respect it, I respect it, but uh, he was not really near that one. As it, uh, <laughs> it was the right idea, though, It's the right, right idea, yeah. yes. yes. <laughs> it was a thought that counts. <laughs> a thought that counts. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they still need 39 <laughs> off. Uh, Keep the, it together, or I'm going to have to hold it together. Come on. <laughs> 39 of 22. Oh. Thanks, Kiwi. <laughs> you know your job. As, uh, Simmons comes in again to Verma, and again, big swing. This one hits the inside edge, though. It's going towards the boundary, but it'll be just pulled in just inside. Good chase by the man from fine leg inside the circle. Uh, but they will pick up a, a very handy two runs. Now six for 122. Halfway through the 17th here. Tell you what, um, Simmons has been economical. 3.3 overs, no wicket for 21. He certainly has. He, he's been the one that's been one of the ones that has embraced these off pitch deliveries. As uh, again, huge swing here on Arma. Nowhere near it. Verma just, uh, yeah, looking to put everything over the grandstand, which is probably what they needed in this situation, particularly with the bowlers now out there. But. He really needs to connect on one of these sooner rather than later if they want to see this target come down. But as I said, he's been one of these ones like uh, like some of the others that just embrace these off-speed deliveries. It's been hard for the batters to get away. Oh, that one has kept absolutely low. Uh, that is the definition of a molly grubber. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it. uh, beaten the keeper as well. And... The, 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 fielder, the fielder returns it to the batter who picks that one up. As you do. <laughs> Flies it in and the batter picks that one up. Nice and gentlemanly here and uh, no appeals for handle the ball. Can, can you just get that for me, would you? But uh, they do run the bye. So 6 for 123 here. 60, 36 required of 19. Oh, again tries to go down the leg side. No wide as he stepped inside it. It, it, would be, it would have probably just got over leg stump, so quite fittingly not a wide. But uh, the students here, 36 required off 18. As I said, Lafonte Jackson and Verma both out there on three. Simmons finishes his four overs. No wicket for 21. And uh, Kiwi Mink, 158, looks a long way away for the students at this point. Yeah, they've just turned it around again, haven't they? And... Um yeah, what a game it's been. Fairfield Liverpool boys just hung in there all day. And now we've got two pretty new batters out there at the crease as well. And Josh Barbara comes in again from the northern end. And again, Verma tries to deposit this on oval number two. He's been a bit expensive. He's been a bit expensive so far. 34 off his uh, first three overs. But... He'll just be trying to stay out of the hitting arc of Verma. As uh, Kim keeps an eye on those YouTube uh, viewing <laughs> numbers. We do appreciate you tuning in. 
Triple H Sport commentary here, Triple H 100.1 FM, and Frog Vox via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel. I think this one's up in the air. Oh, unlucky left for Carruthers. Can't do the job he did last time. Um, just drops in front of him, but they will pick up two much needed runs. Finally gets one out of the middle, but. Straight to someone. <laughs> not 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 over the side screen as, as the last uh, half a dozen <laughs> deliveries have been aimed for. But they said they they can't let this run rate climb any higher here. The students have said if it's not going to go over the pickets, they need to be trying to pick up runs another way. He comes in again now and Ken tries a big swipe, but it's kept low and it's gone through the keeper. Four buys. He'll take that one and the students will take that one. Just kept low, didn't it, Georgia? Again, outside off stump. He, he moved across to try and uh, get in that hitting arc, but uh, it's beaten everyone all ends up. There are so many different um, variations that we've seen and unintentional <laughs> ones as well, as well. Kicking up so much when you throw it and then just skidding through as you bother. I mean, this is absurd. Yeah, like I said, it, it certainly you can tell it's an early season pitch here at University Oval number one is... This one's played through the leg side. Hasn't tried to go up and over this time. Picks out the man at uh, Cow Corner there in front of the scoreboard. One more to the total. Verma moves to six. Six for 130 here. Two balls left in the 18th. 29 still required. Yeah, 29 on 14. So they're up to that two runs a ball or thereabouts. Now it's up to LaFonte Jackson. He needs a boundary here. And again, he tries to go the, the ramp over the keeper's head. It's almost Q in there, Kiwi Mick, and uh, yep. it just dribbles back to the bowler. That's one you do need to be watching on Frogbox because it's a bit hard to uh, describe that shot and where that ended up without seeing it for your own eyes. But I said it is the right decision. It is as I said there is only that man up inside the circle at fine leg. What will he do here? Final ball of his spell. Comes down the wicket and swings it away. Gets it past the man at backward point, and it's four much needed runs here for the students. They're not gonna go away. Six for one thirty-four here. Twenty-five needed off two overs. Yeah, two. Big plays in that over. One where the keeper missed that went for four and then that edge was a bit lucky it went for four as well. That's eight much needed runs, but 25 off 12, this could be a real classic. Yeah, and as you see, it looks like it's going to be Liam Hatcher to come back. We've seen what he's been giving away as well when he bowls those pace on deliveries. Went for two sixes off, his fir off the first two balls of his last over. If he does that again... It puts the students right back in here. But this is what he's used to. He said he's bold, he's bold in these death overs in these big games before. Yep. This is what the Lions will be hoping this experience pays off right now. Big Bash as well, yeah? Big Bash. Yeah. New South Wales representative as well. But uh, Verma, we know he likes to big hit big. Hit big and uh, they're giving him the incentive now. They're bringing mid off up inside the circle. He was back. So, I said, the, the five fielders out. You've got cover sweeper. Third man, fine leg, backward square, and long on. So he'll be looking to go straight here, you would think, the big man. And he does go straight. It beats the keeper, and it's four. He tries to go straight down the ground, but he gets the inside edge past the wicket keeper. Four more runs to the total. They'll take it any way they can, the students. 21 now required off 11. Yeah, well, Max Farmer, the keeper here, that was a pretty difficult one, though. But the one before he probably should have taken. A couple of key boundaries here behind the wicket. And 21 off 11. This game's just ebbing and flowing, isn't it? Yeah, this is why we love T20 cricket. It can sort of go yin and yang as much as it can in such a short space of time. As again he goes oh, past the keeper no. for four again. Hatcher with the, with the on-pace delivery again. He's following Verma down the leg side. He's trying to swing over that over that man at long off into the vacant territory down in front of the scoreboard. <laughs> Just keeps getting that inside edge past Max Farmer, the keeper for four. This is intense. 
17 now required off 10. This is big bash material. <laughs> this is why we love T20 cricket. You're not, it's not over until it's over. Hatcher now in again. And this one just goes short and he pumps it down the ground. They'll look for two, but it's not there. Well fielded by the man at long on. Ooh. Just went shorter there that, that time, Hatcher. He'd been up on a good length. But, and this time was like, no, nah, if you want to try and play a big <laughs> shot, you've got to play towards, a, the, towards the square boundary. And you, it doesn't you've got to do be, it where I put it. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't look to be uh, Burma's strong suit to hit towards that square boundary, even though it is the short one. Mm. 16 off nine. Yeah. Alfonso Jackson now back on strike. What's he going to produce here to Hatcher? And it's wide outside the off stump. Just swings at it. But uh, misses everything. Oh no run. <laughs> It's getting down to it. Two sixes will get it done. I said they are in that territory. Correct. <laughs> eight eight Thank balls. Thank you. Two, two, ball, two a ball required here. 16 off eight. Hatcher. He'll want to he'll wanna leave as much for his uh, bowling partner at the other end to defend in the final over. Wonder who will bowl the last. I'll have a look at that in two seconds as Hatcher now comes in again. Oh, this one's flicked away into the leg side. It is the short boundary. Will they look for two? No. They only pick up the single. 15 off seven. Yeah. Do you know who's got one over left? Who? The left arm orthodox, Cameron Ooh. Frito. Oh, Will he bowl the last? Ooh. Oh. Tell you what. Interesting one. Well, he's three for sixteen off three overs. The young, the young left arm spinner. So he'll be having. He'll be thinking that it's his day. But what can Hatcher <laughs> leave? Shine. What can Hatcher leaving as Verma? Can he get a boundary off this last one? No, it's wide. The mm, bowling. Oh, Ooh. they've looked at it. He did move away to the leg side. The umpires kept the arms down. The Lions will be happy with that one. Hatcher finishes his four overs. One for thirty-eight. Six for 144, 15 required off the last over. And they're going to give it to the spinner to bowl the last. You don't normally see this in 2020s, do you, for the last over? It's generally the other way around. They start with a spinner. Yeah. Well, the young man, they, they're putting a lot of faith in him. He, he's got some big wickets today. Three for 16 off yep. his three overs. But again, it's how smart. There are some gaps out there. We'll, we'll, we're seeing... Uh, Jackson trying to just create some balls down this uh, leg side, particularly past fine leg inside the circle. Can he do that? Can he get the ball through point? There's two fielders there at point and backward point close together, but there's a lot of free, free territory behind him. Over short cover. What's he going to do? Just goes down the ground. One bounce to that man at long off. Picks up a single. 14 off five. Mm. I think Verma, though, he'll be lining up the, 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 the spinner. They're getting, definitely going to need some boundaries in this over. At least. To say the least. Well, we, Verma's been playing one way and one way only. Comes down the wicket, it's up and over. Oh, oh it's just landed short there. Of Jaden Simmons at point. It 13 was, off four, though. Yeah, it was high in the air. He, he thought about going for it, but then thought twice about it. They were happy to give away that one, but you really think now down Jackson, he needs to get a boundary off this delivery. Oh. He's bowled him! He's tried to go the big height down the ground, but this young left arm orthodox spinner, who's been the match of the university students here this afternoon, He's able to just get a little bit of turn out of this University Oval number one pitch, and that's all he needed to beat the bat there of Jackson. He's out bowled. And now seven for 146. 13 required of three deliveries as Devlin Malone makes his way out to the crease. Yeah, Devlin Malone. Spin to spin. Yep. <laughs> we'll he'll he'll know what the bowler's <laughs> trying to do. We've seen him before here on Triple H. He's got the job done. Yeah, yet. true. Not true. normally he can with this smack many required. It. He can smack it. Is he is he their pocket rocket? 
Poten- I think potentially it could be. A six will and Zoe two. Will like that comparison? Or? A six and no, two. No, no. <laughs> a six and two fours will get them home. A six and two fours will get them home. <laughs> two sixes and a single. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Well, Malone, no. Malone here needs to do... To the man in the blue hat. <laughs> Malone needs to do something special here. <laughs> Three balls, 13 runs required for the students to make the semi-finals day in the Kings Row Sports Centre T20 Cup. He goes down the ground, he goes high, and it's out. Straight down, the, straight down to that man at Long On. He's had to move about 10 metres towards the side screen, and you would think barring anything that is the job done here for the Fairfield Lions what a story they should be playing semi-final cricket in two weeks time absolutely we'll be 13 off two so but you can't fault Malone from that he had to go for it yeah five meters straighter and it probably was going at least for a boundary but uh, what a what a what a bowling performance been from young Cameron Frando. Three point four overs, five for eighteen. Yeah, the left arm spin out of nowhere, boom. Having to come in and bowl this last over, two wickets, defending fifteen. It's a he, big ask either way. Certainly is. Tell you what though, two sixes and it'd be a super over, just quietly. Oh. I can't do that. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Kieran Tate comes to the wicket. He's not the worst with the willow. But I said he's going to have to pick his spot. I said he's given nothing away so far as the young left arm spinner for Fairfield. Oh, quicker ball. It goes through the keeper's legs. That'll be it. But it's only a single. 12 required off one. Can he bowl the no ball? Six free hit. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't. <laughs> what's, what's where you're bowling you'd have, it? You'd have five sleepless nights after that one. <laughs> wondering how do I do that? Make sure your foot's well and truly behind the ball, behind the line here. Oh, There okay. it goes. Verma hits the last ball for six, but it's too late. Fairfield Liverpool get the job done. They win by five runs here, and they will play semi-final cricket in two weeks' time. Boy, what a game this was. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, sensational stuff by Fairfield Liverpool. The underdogs coming here. They've pulled off a great upset. They batted well. Their captain led the way. And the spinner at the end here has just pulled off a five for out of nowhere. They've done so well. Sydney University normally always make the final or the semi-finals. This is a good win. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think we can say. I know you're probably a bit disappointed with your... Uh, Allegiance is Georgia, but as I said, they, they, it was a nice close game. Five runs in it at the end, but as I said, they went down swinging there. You just feel a, a, a one shot could have been different there. As I said, Verma yep. finally got that last ball away for six. Maybe if he could have got one of those other swings away, could be a different story, but that's what we love about T20 cricket. We'll go through the card for you for the students. Will Saltzman, he was the man... For the students, caught off Carruthers down at long off. What a catch that was. It will be in the highlight rules in uh, the uh, social media post during the week. That was off the bowling of our man Cameron Frito. 63 off 43, 7 fours, 1 6. Jack Attenborough, he was the first one out. Bowling off Nishke, 8 off 16. Dan, Damian Mortimer, he was out 3 off 5 deliveries. Uh, Tim Cummins, 8 off 8. Stumped off Farmer by Farmer off the bowling of Frito. Jordan Gauchi, 23 off 16. Caught by the Carruthers off the bowling of Liam Hatcher. Ryan McEldriff, he was out for a duck. Four deliveries face there. Off, off, stumped again by Max Farmer off the bowling of Cameron Fredo. LaFonte Jackson, he was bowled um, off Cameron Fredo there. Nine off 11. Uh, Devil Malone was the last man to go. Caught by Singh down on the boundary. Um, he was out for a golden duck. Verma finishes 22, not out off 15. Two. Two fours and that one six. Kieran Tate finishes one not out. There were six extras. Eight for 153. They fell five short here, the students. The bowling for Fairfield Liverpool. Liam Hatcher, four overs, one for 38. Uh, Barbara, four overs, none for 41. Jaden Simmons, he was one of the pick of the bowlers. 21 off his four. Nishke also I was impressed with too. Two for 23. He bowled a lot of those slower balls and yep. cutters, which 
really were effective on this pitch. But boy, have we found that? Have we found another spinner coming through? Cameron Fredo, four overs, five for twenty-five. You would have to say man of the match yep. here um, yep. for the Fairfield Lions. So. They will be playing semi-final cricket in two weeks' time. We don't know what the matchups will be, but we can give you some winners from around the other games. We'll go out to Coogee Oval. The Randy Peets got the job done. They chased down University of New South Wales Bumblebee 75, 4 for 76 off 16 overs. They will be playing semi-final cricket. Um, Parramatta getting the falling... Oh, sorry, Parramatta just falling short out at Marylands Park. Gordon, three for six, three for 163. They finished six for 156. So Gordon holding on there by seven runs. And um, Penrith, they get the job done out at Hurstful Oval with an over to spare. Six for 131, chasing St. George's nine for 130. So we can tell you that um, I would say that it'll be the Randy Peets and Parramatta that will be hosting as they were the two hosts of semi-finals that of quarter-finals that have made it through. Didn't Gordon win against Parramatta though? Yes, but it, they were away. Oh. oh. So Gordon, okay, sorry, Gordon yep. and Fairfield will as the as the away teams. Yep. Winners will, will be travelling to either um, to either Randy Pete's. Oh, have I buggered that up? You think you might have. It's all good. I have. No, Randy well, Pete. Yes, no, that's what you're here for, Kiwi Ming. Randy Pete are the only and home I team. I was the comic relief. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Pete are the only funny. home that's winners. <laughs> so we know one of the games will be at Coogee Oval. Yeah. Um, and then it will be the highest ranked out of Fairfield, Liverpool, Gordon, and Penrith that will host the other semi final in yeah. two weeks' time. So. Who knows where we'll end up in two weeks' time? <laughs> Fingers crossed for Gordon. So basically, three away teams, one out of the four. Yep. So you'd almost say three upsets out of four, really. Yeah. 100%. Because the other teams had a week mm. off, and those other ones won last week. Yeah. But as I said... Fun fact. Gordon Gordon have not played a home game so far in the in the Kingsgrove T20 Cup, and here they are in the semi-finals. So Fairfield-Liverpool, the underdog story. Great to see them there. Penrith, well, we know how good they are. Um, but they get the job done over over uh, St. George and um, the Bumblebees. We, we called them last week versus Mossman. That was a low-scoring game. But, yeah, you just can't defend 75 in a T20 game. But, uh, Kiwi McGeorger, your thoughts here? Um, we, we, it was just a little bit of a bridge too far. I think both teams will be happy that it was close. But sort of once they sort of took that fifth and sixth wicket for the uh, for the students you thought that the Lions were home yeah. yeah yeah look definitely agree and it was a fantastic game nonetheless as well yes the students fell short but congratulations to Fairfield Liverpool as well an amazing game and knowing um, when you know when to act on certain things as well which was a fantastic effort it was a spectacular game either way yeah great effort by um um, Fairfield, Liverpool. First time I've actually seen them play in first mm. grade, to be honest with you. I've never not, really not seen them. Yeah, not normally mm. a team we no. come up with. You normally no. play in the Thunder Conference. So. Yeah, I, haven't, I don't think I've mm. seen them at Allen Border Oval on my Saturdays there either. But, um, yeah, no, a great win. And Sydney University would be a bit disappointed with that one. They would have really probably expected to win at home. I think they would have. So, yeah, yeah. a bit of an upset there. But, as I said, this is why we love T20 cricket. So... We will be at one of these semi-finals. Um, as I said, we can fingers crossed that Gordon get one. I don't think they will, unfortunately, but stranger things have happened. But we'll, we'll make our way out to one of those semi-finals in two weeks' time. Next week, hopefully, we'll be at uh, one of the uh, women's matches around Sydney Town. We will uh, discuss more about that during the week. Stay tuned to our social media, Triple H Sport, on Facebook, Instagram, and X to find out where we will be in the week, in the in next week and in the weeks to come. Um, stay tuned if you're listening on Triple H 100.1 FM. We will uh, have splinters. Our podcast will be on after this. It is the uh, WBBL preview before the first game on Thursday night between 
the Sydney Sixers and the Melbourne Stars. So from here at Sydney University Oval number one, the Fairfield Liverpool Lions get the job done over the Sydney University students by five runs. They will be in the semi-finals of this Kings Row Sports Centre T20 Cup in two weeks' time. For Kiwi McRoney, it's George Lomas for Turum. I am Matt Mears. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll catch you down the road.
I know, I know.